Ice is ready, and we are back with another episode of the Empty Netters podcast. This might be the first time we've done one where the two of us... Actually, that's not true. That's not true. We, at all. we did one like this. I was home, and there yeah. were, like, mom's reindeer in nice. the, on the mantle in the background. That's you know? a nice background. Yeah. That's a nice yeah. background. Well, we got CP in Boston. How's it going over there? Uh, dude, it's going great right now. I feel like the lucky run of weather that we were having, the three yeah. of us in Toronto and Detroit, has continued today. It's a beautiful day out in Boston. However, tomorrow is supposed to be the greatest snowstorm that the Northeast has ever seen. Like, there's, like, national alerts about that's, how much snow is coming tomorrow. That's sick, though, dude. Like, snow is, <laughs> snow is the best. Like, I feel like we haven't got any snow, so you're finally going to get the snow. That's money. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. Um, hoping it doesn't go through hope it doesn't mess my flights up on thursday that's it yeah true, true. what's your uh what's your go-to winter activity uh i play hockey and i fornicate because those are the two most fun things to do in cold weather that's one of the quickest draw <laughs> responses i've ever heard and i'm so fucking impressed and proud of you wow well done god i'd wait my whole life for that dude. holy <laughs> shit that was fucking awesome well, sir, I don't know how we're going to top Let's that. just wrap it up. Let's just wrap it up. Yeah. That's a great up. We've got a great episode coming for you today. We've got Lucas Raymond of the Detroit Red Wings joining the podcast, as well as former All-Star MVP John Scott on the episode. Two complete beauties. Lucas, such a stud. John, what a homie. So funny. So cool. If you're not following John on Twitter, Instagram, uh, listening to his podcast, he's such a ledge. So funny, so quick off the draw. Maybe not as quick as you with that joke. I was right about to say that though, dude. He's witty. He's a witty mf'er, man. Yeah, he's he's a great hang, great guy. To he talk sure to. is. So we're gonna jump into some of the goods here because we want to get you guys right to those interviews. Let's start off with our no Bucky warm up. I'm gonna go with my guy. I mean, listen, you're listening to the Empty Netters podcast. And we've Big got Empty new, Netters week for us, we've, actually. We've, yes, that's actually so true. We've got a couple of empty, empty net things to talk about. But first of all, we've got a new Empty Net king, Alex Ovechkin, dude. 57 Empty Net goals breaks Wayne Gretzky's record. More importantly, Ovi's on a five-game goal streak, and he's got 14 points in 13 games in the 2024 calendar. The haters of Ovi have been real quiet in 2024. That's all I got to say. Dude, uh, and I wouldn't account myself among the haters, but I happily admit, and this happened with Chelios in Nashville, when he said, he was like, I don't think Ovi breaks it. I definitely got caught up in the cliff hype. Like, I was like, oh man, wow. I did yeah. not see this coming. I don't hate Ovi. I don't wish any ill will towards him, but it's over. Like he, something has happened. He's fallen off a cliff. This is fucking crazy. I'm sad it happened, but that's the reality. Dude, and it, yeah, now, he, now he's on a bit of a rip. And I'm like, well, the the news of his demise was premature. I just can't believe it, man. It's, you know, we we talk about all the time when when a new threat comes into a league and especially is playing for a team that plays against your favorite team. I understand hating greatness. I understand hating greatness when... Let, let's stay relevant. If you're not a fan of the Kansas City Chiefs and Pat Mahomes comes in and is a weapon, you're going to hate him right now. But it's it's like what we saw with Brady at the end of his career. I think it's definitely what we're seeing now with Crosby. When one of your adversaries who is great gets older, I feel like you've got no choice but just to respect them, to love them. LeBron, another one, is like, you can hate someone all you want, but if they are great and if they answer the bell of what was expected of them and surpass it in their older days, you're kind of like, how can I hate this dude? Like, this is fucking incredible. I feel like everyone's doing that with Crosby, but for whatever reason, this year, so many people have been like, fuck Ovi, dude. He sucks. He's a one-trick pony. He can only score goals, blah, blah, blah. We talked about it a few episodes. Like, you're an idiot if you think that, first yeah. of all. Second of all, what's not to like about Ovi? He's a generational goal scorer, probably the best goal scorer we've ever seen. He's so funny. He's so cool. And he's just been entertaining to watch his entire career. So people dancing on the grave of his slow start at the beginning of this season was so odd to me. The so, premature grave. And, and oh, not to yeah, tease dude. another app we have coming up soon, but a guest we had on 
talked so flatteringly about Ovi and, and how he helped mentor him and what he meant to him as a player. So you hear stories like that and it's even more insane than anyone's ever rooting against the guy. So to see him pop a few here uh, was nice. And dude, I throw back to great one Fridays. I can't remember the stat exactly. We'll have to dig this up, but there was a cool Gretzky stat we put in that was like, you know, OV's got the most power play goals, the most empty net goals. You know, then the point of the stat was to highlight how lit Gretzky was five on five. Yeah. Like, you know, oh, it's it is awesome that OV's gonna catch him, but like Gretzky five on five is a fucking mutant. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, but uh it, it is funny to, you know, everyone likes to chirp when they're like, Well, of course he has the most empty netters. And I'm like, Yeah, it's not it's not a chirp, dude. No shit. The guy gets the puck in the net. I don't give a fuck who's standing in there. He's putting it in. So I'm glad he's got this title too. Hundo P, dude. And and yeah, I mean What's funny to me is <clears throat> even with his slow start this year, people thinking the cliff had come. I just don't get if you don't think that Ovi is going to yager himself until he's like 44. You're you not said that because yeah. Ovi's what he's a first liner. He's a first line left wing without a one C, by the way. People keep just forgetting that. And he's having a tough year, but he's still like leading the caps in points. If not, he's top three. So. I've I've loved how people just think the cliff is here, dude. You know he might leave the Caps at some point and just sign as a third line left wing PP specialist. With he has a too much contest. class to do that, Dan. Yeah, he would yeah. never leave the Caps. How <laughs> could he possibly do something like that? It's absurd, dude. But I'm like that guy could score twenty until he's forty four if you just put him on the fucking Avalanche and be like this. Yeah, just yep. play power play in third line, dude. He'll be so fine. so to that point, he's at thirteen goals. 48 games played so far this year. Do you think he can get to, you know, salvage a 30 goal season? No. No. But I think he can get 25. Yeah. And like if he get, if he has a 25 goal season, I'm like that's fine. That's so a fine season. And so right now he's 59 back of record. How many assists does he have this season? Yeah. 23. You know it's actually the you, first time in a while he's had more assists than goals. But you know what's real funny? You know who else he has more assists than? Austin Matthews. <laughs> pretty pretty funny thinking about all those people flipping out about oh about that Kiprios clip. It's true. Alex Ovechkin, true. who you've all called a fucking bum loser this year, <laughs> has more assists yeah. than Austin Matthews. So. I mean, he'll be he'll be like close to 40 away going into next year. Yeah. So and, to your and, point, Dan, even and, if he's like even if this is the cliff, he can he can't get 20 for two more years. He's fucking yeah. high. Yeah, like of course he can. And dude, it would not surprise me in the slightest if he just popped the 40 goal season next year. Yeah, yeah, agree. Totally. So, um, but yeah, it's lovely to see Ovi on this five game goal heater over a point per game in 2024. It's just fantastic. I hope he just, you know, he got he got a little rest. I said I think he was a little injured and then he got more significantly injured, got a little rest and he's come back looking great. So love to see it. Let's pop into our next empty net topic. Ottawa Senators playing the Toronto Maple Leafs this weekend. Ridley Gregg of the Ottawa Senators gets a little breakaway up 4-3, right? 4-3 or was it 3-2? I think it was 4-3. I think it was 4-3. 5-3, Blake, is that right? 5-3 and yeah. Yeah, Ridley's. So up 4-3, gets a little breakaway with less than a minute or so left. How much time actually? I think it was does like it, 51 seconds or something like that. How much time was left there? I think it was like 51 seconds or something. Yeah, it was, it was garbage. Time. Yeah. Uh, gets a clear breakaway, unloads a clapper into the empty net. And then Morgan Riley comes through, cross check to the dome, little kerfuffle going on, little scrap with all the boys. And now people have been getting loud on Twitter, getting real angry, both sides. Bit of a rivalry with these two teams that we haven't seen in a long time. So it was nice to see the bad blood come back. But CP, you know, I tweeted something last night that, or uh, Saturday night, that no big deal kind of popped off on old X. Uh, but curious what your take is on this. Dude, so I actually just checked. There were six seconds left. And, oh, six uh, seconds. Yeah. There yeah. You go. Dude, this has been a really polarizing moment and there were i was with a bunch of hockey boys last night and asked them and the, even the room i was in everyone among the group was a friend of mine and that was completely split down the middle uh i have a pretty and obviously uh, you know we we kind of went off on social defending empty netters as is our right <laughs> but even with that hyperbolic jokes aside dude th i could not feel more passionately about this in one direction if if he had celebrated hard 
I think people have a bigger argument. And I've actually seen people say the exact reverse of this. But if, if Ridley went down, just pushed the puck into the empty net, and then came around fucking windmill, stick between the legs, doing the bull dance, feeling the flow, working it, and then he took a fucking cross check to the face, I'd be like, yeah, sorry, dude, you cannot do the bull dance after an empty netter like that, right? That the Selly, which was a jumper, would would have done it for me. Dude, he walks, she comes down the ice. They are grinding, trying to protect a one goal lead. The play kind of, you know, he jumps past the D, the play squirts loose and he's like, yo, I'm gone. Gets the breakaway pass, comes down. He can shoot that puck in the empty net. However, the fuck no. he wants, dude. No. He curls around, however, doesn't do shit. However the fuck I yeah. please. <laughs> dude, he doesn't do shit. He curls around and takes one across the fucking brow. That is ridiculous. It is the equivalent, Dan, of if you're playing D in basketball and then you get a steal and you get a breakaway no, and you win no dunk it, No, dude. it is you not. You are allowed to fucking that put is it the in the hoop fucking however dumbest you fucking shit. want. That is the dumbest dude, shit I've if ever. If you were no, up three in a basketball up, game, up, defending the up, fucking three point line, get up. a steal and go on a breakaway, and someone got mad for you not laying it in, the, the, you're a high person. Dude. Shut up, dude. The, you know why? You know why this is so stupid? First of all, there's no fucking goalie in basketball, idiot. Second of all, that happens all the time. A quick interception, quick fast break in basketball. Someone's nude and they dunk it. That happens but all listen the time. To the, the, no, the stop, scenario it, I just stop talking. Stop talking. It doesn't matter because that happens all the time. When have you seen this season or otherwise someone get a breakaway and unload a clapper in the NHL? Rarely, if ever. That's the point. It is an unwritten rule. I, listen, I agree with everything else you're saying. The reaction is absurd. But if you don't, if you think you could get a breakaway and hit a clapper into an empty net in an, in an NHL game and not hear it from the other team, you're a moron. And you know that. I know you're not a moron. So this take is just stupid for stupid sake. They, no, no, it's no. not. They should, they should fucking chirp you all you want. Nice clapper, bud. Fuck you. And I'm like, it's fuck you. Nice fucking, nice man up offense, you fucking losers. I'll shoot that puck in however the fuck I want. That's so, crazy, dude. No, it's not crazy. Like, if you, if you want to be the one guy He's on this hill, up. good for you. Like, good for you. But you know you're going to get something for it. And I, I, th this is the point that we made on Twitter that is correct. You got to expect when you hit that clapper – that you're going to get something from someone, as you should. And, and I'm with you in that if you're fired up, that's a big win for the boys. You're on a little bit of a, uh, of a good run here, Ottawa, and you're feeling the juices and you want to pound that home, be my guest. But you've got to turn and expect something, which I think Greg did. But obviously, Morgan Riley, wires crossed, went full psychopath and cross-checked him in the head. That's not cool. You're going to get suspended as you should. But, dude, you can't hit that clapper and curl up ice and be like, doo, 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 doo. I did nothing. You're a fucking idiot if you think that's the case. And that is a fact. And anyone with a hockey brain knows that. Now, to your point, what should have happened is I think Riley should have like slashed him in the back of the legs, maybe given him a chop down on the arms or something like that. He came in way too hot. But yes, chirp him, give him a little shot or, or something. But Cross check to the dome, not cool, and that's the biggest. Absolutely ridiculous. Here. I hope he gets as most games as humanly possible. Absolutely Such fucking ridiculous fucking reaction fucking... for someone <laughs> shooting a puck into a fucking open net that you coughed up, you fucking loser. I actually I can't believe can't, that. I can't believe how stupid this take is. This is well, the dumbest you've ever come off. So it's just insane add some that context. people got mad about that. Just add some context. Well, so. hold on. Got no one got. Oh, well, first of all, and I want to hear your yeah. context, Blake. People who got mad about it agree. Are, are morons. But Chris, if, if the other side happens, for example, if we were out on the ice and you're Morgan Riley and someone does that and hits that clapper into the open net and you do nothing and come back to our bench, our entire team gives you shit because we're like, you're a pussy for letting that happen, dude. And, you're, and, and we are right. So hold on. Getting mad, like fans, Maple Leafs fans who are like, that's so disrespectful. Oh my, it's against the game of... That is lame, but you should get fired up about it because you have been disrespected and yep, you've lost, but that's why I said chirp him, give him a leg hack because that's what you deserve. And I love the move from Greg. I love the move from Greg. Like I, I, if he does that, expect to get a little bit of shit and, and take the shit. Cause you're like, yeah, fuck you loser. You turned it over. I fucking scored an empty net and we win. Ha ha. Fuck you. You take your beating. But I, I like the move of taking your beating to fire up your team and piss off the other team. But people who are mad for, like, the disrespect, like, oh, no, that's, that's lame. I agree. But if you think that you shouldn't 
or you should be able to do that with no repercussions at all. That's just wrong. And everyone in the NHL agrees. Like you have to say something. So I think one, so it shows the, the Leafs inexperience on standing up for themselves and their teammates. Uh, Riley coming in way too hot. Cause yeah, like, yes, you should go and confront him, but yeah, you cannot go fucking shaft to the yeah. teeth. Um, <laughs> some context. Apparently Ridley Gregg, and it's not been officially confirmed, but apparently Ridley Gregg was scolded by the GM, uh, Steve Steos, and the head coach uh, after the, the empty net uh, incident. Lame. Um, lame. Yes, That's lame. Agree. So, uh, and then, yeah, Morgan Riley's been offered an in-person hearing, which can lead to, which puts the possibility of the suspension being over five games. Uh, Riley has never been suspended in his career, so I don't think it'll reach five games. I predict, like, between... I'd probably say three or four games. Dude, you know what bums me out? It's going to be six. Really? I think it's going to be six because David Perron, who's never yeah. been suspended, true, came in defending his teammate after a cheap shot and did exactly this, and he got six games. And I, my problem is I thought that was absurd. That should have been two games. I think this should be two games. Like Chris, Chris thinks Morgan Riley should be suspended for the rest of the season, which <laughs> all, all, Pinto all, treatment, Pinto <laughs> treatment. <laughs> all respect to you. But I think this shit should be like, you know what, you know, what bums me out. And I don't, I don't want to spend too much time on this. Intent to injure has been bastardized. Just like dirty player has been bastardized to me. Intent to injure is Todd Bertuzzi punching someone in the back of the skull. Like your wires crossing coming in when something shisty has happened like this and your stick gets up too high. I don't think that's intent to injure. I think it's a dangerous play. And if you ask Morgan Riley, if you go, when you saw that go in, did you go, I'm going to cross check him in the face. I think under a lie detector, he'd be like, no dude. I like, I saw red, I was pissed and, and it, it was an accident. And that, but Dan, that's just like, to interject on that, I will yep. say he, this wasn't his stick rode up by he came in to get him in the chest and his stick rode up. This was direct stick to face. That was I, he, my target was hit. I agree. And that's why I'm saying I think he saw red and I think he was like, I'm going to yep. cross check. And in the moment, dude, like you're skating to buy like Greg kind of turns weird, not weirdly. I'm not making excuses, but like, I don't think he came in there going, I'm going to cross check him in the face. I think he was going, I'm going to cross check him. And then he just hit him in the face and was like, oh, Jesus, that was too intense. I think it's a fucking accident. And that's why I'm like, this should be two, three games, four if you want to be aggressive. But I just think we're getting out of hand with suspensions, dude. Like six fucking games, that's so much, dude. Like that's so many games for something like this. Well, and everyone's been harping on the consistency of the, you know, the level of suspension. So I think it's fair point that you're making about the David Perron incident because yeah, they're almost a mirror image uh on you know on paper. So. And I, I think six what games. what sucks, dude, is if you don't go six now, you have an entire Detroit fan base who's gonna be like this. Are you fucking shitting me, dude? Yeah. Like this was not the heat of battle. It wasn't after a cheap shot. This was after an empty net goal. You're not gonna give him as much as Perron. So by that logic i'm like you have to give him six but i stand by i think that's too many games for both it was you shouldn't match a mistake by giving this also mm. six but unfortunately if you don't people are in an uproar so it's gonna was, be six i was close to well, speaking of consistency dan i feel like i was being i was much harder on Perron than you were and i'm much harder on riley than you were so like we're, we're aligned here too but but i will say i just i'll say the same thing i said about Perron. And even worse in his case, because I'm 100% on your side in that he was defending a teammate and all that shit, right? But, dude, I just, I am for, and you're usually like this, but I am for the harder suspensions for shit that I just don't think has a place in this. Like, under no circumstances did anybody be cross-checked in the face, period. My stick rode up, I wasn't, I'm my wires crossed, I don't give a fuck, dude. If you cross-check him in the face, you're getting six games and good day, sir. Stick riding up, you know how. Like, that can happen so unlikely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, a I, you know, off, off the shoulder pad, low chin, whatever. But, like, one that hits someone and, right here, I'm like, yeah, go away. And, and and that is where I will kind of back down because it is I, – I, I do like the takes of control your fucking stick, dude. Like, don't be a psychopath. And, yeah, like – so more than two games is – you know, two games is kind of a slap on the wrist, and it should be more than that, but – that's where I think it's like four missing four games. is like, you know, that's a week and a half of hockey. Like that's Yeah. Yeah. So I'm kind of like four should be fine, but yeah, either way. Uh, I think it's lame that the Ottawa coach and GM came cracked down on him. Like Same. you can crack down on him in the media. 
maybe be like this ah you know like that's kind of a shitty move we're not about that blah 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 but in the locker room you're like i fucking love it dude fire it up um but either way the drama of this season continues and i absolutely love it morgan riley take a fucking chill pill buddy you gotta get your <laughs> shit together and you're gonna get pp whacked as you deserve and hey, Ridley, fucking clap them into the empty net whenever the fuck you want, buddy. Yeah, seriously. And, yeah, and I will say, dude, like Morgan Riley, you know, you're you're the top defenseman on that team. You're sitting in fourth place in the Atlantic right now, right? Are they in they're Tampa still above uh, them right now? No, they're first first in the wild card. But they're fourth in the Atlantic. Yes, yeah. 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 yeah so I'm Atlantic, like, not so. a good time to lose your number one D man. So Detroit's coming on their heels. Yeah. As yeah. a leader, Morgan Riley, not not the best imagine to be if, imagine in like 10 years we're gonna have guys michigan into an open net <laughs> yeah, yeah. fuck yeah they're gonna go <laughs> zach bell swaggy p between the legs <laughs> throw 60 good yeah. dude whatever i don't care <laughs> shoot it in. um Chris all right on the glass banging let's do some yeah. quick let's do some quick hot ice before we get into these interviews blake you had a little topic for us i want you to tee us up you know heading into the deadline right now who are your cup contenders legitimate mm. cup contenders if you know if the playoffs started right now who do you have confidence in saying this team could legitimately have a chance at winning the stanley cup and dan and i think let's shape it this way in that examining that question via the conference imbalance or how it feels like yeah. i think that's what's cool right now um yeah do you want to give like two from each conference well dude how about i'll do you one better bro i think there are only two from the east like period yeah Okay, and I'm curious. I'm curious to hear those because I, I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm borderline prepared to say my four cup contenders are all in the West. Yeah, so, dude, I, and my, my, I think top it's a four. Probably are three of them. There's only one East team that might make top four for me. Yeah, I, I feel, I feel pretty passionately that, uh, for the first time in a long time, uh, that the cups coming out of the West. And I'm like, I know that someone won last year, but we were like, dude. The East is way better than every team in the West last year. It's going to be an Eastern team. And then ho-hum Vegas comes through and peep fucking absolutely pistol whips everybody. But um, I, yeah, the West right now is, is I think, the real nails of the league. So you can start, Chris. Okay, so all I'll say is this. And I'm talking straight up like, damn, that team right now, I feel like that team could go through a four fucking series run and I'd be scared to see them in the yeah. final. Florida, I've been on them since the preseason. I just think that team is built on grit more than they're built on finesse, but obviously have guys that can score, have a goalie that can do it. So that team I still think is a threat, having mm -hmm. a great season. And then for me, dude, uh, Tampa, only because Cooch is going so hard and Vassy could be, get good. That's the only other East team I'm even remotely scared of. Boston, no. Toronto, no. Detroit, no. Literally no one in the Met. Uh, um, yeah, I think it's Florida and only Florida. I don't even yeah. think it's Tampa. I think Tampa, I, I, I think it's been a wire to wire season of Tampa, like flirting with being in the playoffs and being out of the playoffs. And I just look at them like last year, right? It's like last year they mm -hmm. were a, they were a wild card team drew Toronto. We were all like, uh Oh, Toronto, you're going to lose. And then Toronto won in six. And a lot of bad like, bounces though for Tampa in that series. Like yeah, I felt like but, they were the better team most of those but games. But that happens all the time, yep. doesn't it? Cry like, about it, oh, but I'm know, just like, saying. A lot, you know, of, like, lot of bad bounces in the Boston, Florida series. Got got news for you. You lost to a fucking wild card team. So yeah. it is what yeah. it is. So yeah, I, I just think Tampa is exactly what they were last year. If they get in the playoffs, I think they're going to lose in the first, maybe second round. Uh, I think Florida is the only team that has all the balls here to go the yep. distance. Like, I agree. It, it breaks my heart to say it about Boston, but. Boston just lost Patra for the rest of the year. Some idiots uh, in the fan base are like, Patra stinks. That wasn't any depth. Of, uh, dude, bottom six wins you Stanley Cups. If you don't have a existent bottom six, you are dead. And you just lost a good bottom six player. Especially and there's been so much turnaround in the, Bru in the Bruins' bottom six. So we talk about it all the time. I, I don't think that they have the the capital to make a ton of trades here to really beef up. So I don't know what they're going to do. Donnie's going to get, have to get real crafty, but it breaks my heart. I don't see a long playoff run for this Boston Bruins team. I think it is Florida and only Florida. And then on the West and I'll jump in Chris legitimately. I think like my cup contenders are Vegas and Colorado. Okay. Yeah, I thought you might and, say that. And I say that, with right behind them, literally ripping their shirts off right behind them, 
Dallas, Winnipeg, Vancouver, and Edmonton. I think yeah. all six of those yeah. teams are fucking dominant right now and could easily win a Stanley Cup. Easily. Dude, so much is going to change, but right now, Colorado, Winnipeg, Vegas, Edmonton, first round, first round matchups, dude. <laughs> the West playoff is going to be a fucking bloodbath. And you know what, dude? Currently in the wild card is uh, the, the Kings and the, the, the fucking Blues, lol. And I think those two teams are so far off the rest. That's what's interesting. If you look at the, the East going from Atlantic to Metro and then the two wild cards, it's, it's Boston, Florida, Tampa Bay, Rangers, Hurricanes, Flyers, Leafs, Red Wings. I think all of those teams are pretty similar to each other. With the, ex- coin flip, yeah. with the exception of Florida. I think Florida is a little edge up above everyone else. But then after that, it's like Islanders, Devils, Penguins are down there. Like those are all teams that I'm like, they're pretty similar. And pretty similar. Yeah, yeah, agree. But but in the West, I think the Kings and Blues are such a step below those top six. And then Preds, Calgary, Seattle, Wild below that are just like, get out of here you have zero business what if kings what if kings snap back to normal though with the that was my next point add them to the crew first game under hiller they looked fucking electric and if they in the next 10 games here find their footing that they had in the first 30 games of the season i'm like they're right back in that group with the six so crazy um but yeah those six teams in the west dude are like those are my top six cup contending teams over florida too yeah like those teams are so good it's fucking nuts what's going on it's insane i i man i'm i'm torn between i'm, I'm saying vegas because i've said this to you a million times dan the everyone is sleeping on vegas right now because they're hurt and shit yep. and they if, if and this happened uh last year but th- like inexplicably if they just get healthy by playoffs it doesn't matter when where they are in the rankings if they get into the playoffs and they have their full squad i know who dude. wants to play them dude and, and like hill, they ran through everybody last hill year. is playing vesna caliber uh <laughs> goalie and we already know he can do it he's already won a cup he's yeah already so done the four se- like yeah who wants to run into that buzzsaw if they I, get healthy if but if yeah. they do i'm like dude, no they, they will the dude. They're, they're doing exactly what they did last year like they're big ifs could probably come back right now, but you yeah, know yeah. that they're just waiting for the last 10 games. They're, they're, they're smart. They're doing exactly what they did. Yeah. So it's, and it feels crazy for me to not say Colorado. I think I'm going to say Edmonton cause I was on them all year and I'm, I have this much more belief in Skinner than you do. Mm-hmm. Um, but I might be just be getting fooled again because he could easily put up a playoff stinker. And I'm like, well, my bad. Cause that is the big problem for me. Yeah. For me, it's like, I look at Colorado and Edmonton and I'm like, you got McDavid and dry style. I'm like, yeah, well you've got McKinnon and moose. It's this, that like they, they cancel each other out. I think Col- Colorado has done it. They've got the vastly better defense. And I, I give the edge to Georgia Go- <laughs> to, is it Georgiev or Georgia? Georgia. I always say Georgia, but yeah, yeah. I call him um, Georgie. Yeah, that's what I'm getting confused. Yeah, yeah. They, they call him George, but yeah, I give the edge to Georgiev over over uh, Skinner. So I would love to see a Winnipeg, Vancouver deep run. Just think it would be fun for those teams. Vancouver's going deep, dude. I promise. Yep. you. I promise and you. And God, going Dallas, deep. man, I, I've been on. I've been pumping their tires for a long time. It would yeah, be cool. I, I'm gonna give a a lo- little locker room speech for Dallas real quick, and then we can move on. What number one? Get Miro help. I've been saying yeah. that for months. I think their big deadline thing is, and it's not a huge name. You know, it, it maybe it's a Tanev. I don't. I, I think Hannafin is is too much of an overpay. Like, I think you go and get a good second pair, third pair, even maybe, good solid defenseman to help out Miro on the back end, and I think you're going to see drastic improvements to that defensive core. Uh, and then you're gonna hate this one, dude. Jake Ottinger, it's not up or shut up time. I, I, I think we've been singing his praises for years, and he's just had a couple of stretches here in the season where people have been like, damn, Otter's not playing that great. And I'm kind of like, yeah, he's not. And <sighs> you have to because you're that good. And I need to see a I need to see a convincing playoff run from Otter before I keep putting the, da- the Dallas Stars in this game. Collection of plus great minus teams. in the league though otter has had some playoff experience or well, playoff successful playoff yep. experience in that calgary series remember he almost stole that series yeah but then didn't right yeah like yeah. that's my point is like he plays remember the so calgary well. players were like that's the best goaltending i've ever seen on earth like, yes they were high-fiving him after isn't it easy to stroke someone off when you beat them 
you're you're the most humble about your opposition after you've beat them into submission. Yeah, that's just the reality, dude. So I'm tired. You know, it's like I I I I'm, I think he is tired, and I think they are tired of being like, oh yeah, everyone sings our praises after they fucking beat us. You got to win. This could change in a matter of at one, the end of the week. Weeks. Yeah. Yeah. True. All right. You want to kick it to these interviews? I do. All right, we're going to kick it to these interviews, guys. Back to back, we got John Scott and Lucas Raymond coming up. Hope you enjoy them as much as we did. All right, well, we are pleased right now to be joined by a Alberta native, a Michigan Tech mechanical engineering yeah. grad, former member of the Wild Blackhawks, Rangers, Sabres, Sharks, Yotes, and Canadiens, the 2016 NHL All-Star MVP, and... The host of the Drop in the Gloves podcast, John Scott. Welcome to the Empty Netters podcast. Psyched to have you. Hi, Dan. Hi, Chris. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Happy to be here. Uh, we're pumped. We're pumped. We, you know, we just got back from All Star, like we talked about, and to be sitting here with a NHL All Star MVP is pretty special. Very special. It Very is special, special for you guys. I agree. It yeah. is. <laughs> this what is, is a big honor for us. I'm going to just try not to be starstruck the entire time. Oh, so you're you know, so well, full yeah. of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Well, we, as we just discussed, we just got back from All Star, so I want to start there. And before we get into some of the fun experiences of it, and, and John, obviously you've told the story one billion times, but some of our listeners don't know the whole saga and, and maybe haven't read your truly beautiful Players' Tribune articles. Mm. So could you just give like the elevator pitch of the like being on the Coyotes, going on Wyshynski, or Wyshynski makes that comment on the pod and then kind of like what rolled through from there to the Canadians? Yeah, so quick read through. I was playing on the Coyotes' fourth line, healthy scratch sometimes, just a very secondary player, fan voting for the first time in a long time. Greg Wyshynski, Puck Daddy, has a good idea. Let's vote on a player who doesn't belong there. They settle on me. I get a ton of votes, millions of votes. The The league steps in, doesn't want me to go. They get me traded to Montreal. From Montreal, I go to St. John's. In the AHL, I get sent down. Some banter back and forth. Should I go to the game? I eventually go to the game from the AHL. Uh, never happened before. won't happen since. Go to the All-Star <laughs> game, win the MVP. That's the elevator just reached the top floor. That's the pitch. Yep. Yeah. Unbelievable. Okay. I mean, okay. it's, it's such a crazy song. Yeah. Especially with the, the stuff. And I encourage anyone listening that doesn't know the story to read the both players should be articles, but the stuff about the, that middle when the elevator's on the 20th floor on the way up, like the league, the pressure from the league to not go is like baffling to me to this day. I cannot believe that. Yeah. How did you deal with that? You know, that's the thing. Everybody just thinks of hockey players as like tough, really like just nothing flaps as I was a mess the whole time. And luckily I had my wife to kind of bounce things off of. And my agent was, it was a rock star, Ben Hankinson. And if I didn't have those people, I would have been a mess. So I would daily you guys, cause yeah, I would talk to my GM, Don Maloney. I would have conversations with the league and they were actively trying to get me not to go offering me trips and money and all kinds of different stuff. They're like insulting me in some conversations, like challenging my, my just, everything my manhood what is your parents gonna think what are your kids gonna think be like this is a bad decision and anyways my wife and my agent really really stepped up and other players throughout the league I, I would lean on them a little bit and they'd be like no you should go this is a good thing you deserve to go and uh yeah but at the end of the day it was not easy to go through that whole process because you just it's brutal like they they're telling you no we don't want you to be here you're not good enough um and then in the press and the media and guys like you ripping me apart it was it was a lot of it was brutal <laughs> no i course. bet i bet what, what was uh what was the vibe from the guys in the league you know some of your teammates guys you play against were they were they supportive telling you to say you know fuck it come go go you've been voted in you deserve it 100 percent, yeah and that was a huge part of it because that was shane doan's last year and he was having a really good year and so everybody mm. was like you're ruining this for shane Doan." Like this could be a swan song where he could go to the game and we could send him off into the sunset. And so the coyotes kind of made me release a statement saying, don't vote for me, vote for Shane. And um, obviously it didn't work. I still got the votes, but yeah, it was difficult. Shane was great about it. He's like, you should go. Yeah. Like this, this is fantastic. That guy's a legend. Obviously I'm sure you know about him or know him personally, but he's yeah the best. And all the other guys around the league, 
were the same way. They're like, this, this will be fun. This will be great. And then it was the tough guys too, who really stood up and the older tough guys, yeah. Kelly chases and Stu Grimson's and, you know, Chris Nyland's those guys who reached out and said, this, you should go like, we're, we're good. Go and show everybody how we're actually hockey players. So that, that meant a lot for them to reach out to. Well, well, John, that was one of my favorite quotes that you had in your piece where it's like, you aren't a guy, a random dude off the street that they called into the game. You're a fucking NHL player. Yeah. You know, like there's that's the elite of the elite of the elite. So certainly I'm good enough to go play in an NHL sanctioned game. Well, I think people much. forget that. And then, you know, I go play these beer league games and everybody just assumes I'm just going to fight the whole time. And I go you're like, yeah, <laughs> we, we did like most of the goons were the top scorers for their junior team. When you look around the league, those guys lit it up in juniors. I, I didn't because I was a defenseman and I was terrible all along. I just lucked out. But <laughs> we're pretty talented. Like we, I got to practice with yeah. guys for 10 yeah. years in the NHL. So you, you'd be hard pressed to find someone who is really bad. But no, I don't know. It's just funny. I don't know. Yeah. No, yeah. but it is true. You know, we we talk about like Chris just said, if you're in the NHL, you're in the top point oh one percent of talent yeah. in in the game of hockey. And you know, we talked to Sean Thornton not long ago. He had that really fun. I think it was in one of his last years with the Bruins. He got a penalty shot in a game and came in and did like the backhand toe drag top yeah. shelf, and everyone was like, "What the fuck?" And he was like, "Listen, I'm not a clown. Yeah. Like, I'm I obviously have talent in the game of hockey, and I do think." People forget that way too often. So that whole moment with you being able to go there, showcase the the abilities that you have that led to a long and, and great NHL career is awesome. Um, Chris mentioned that the Tribune article that really was phenomenal and something stuck out to me more than anything else that I really wanted to touch on. <clears throat> you obviously get to the league and fighting becomes a huge part of your game. It's something that you're asked to do as an enforcer. And I think a lot of people sort of have this assumption that if you're an enforcer, if you're a fighter, guys who gets in a lot of scraps, you really relish those moments and you just want to go for it. And you really got into the fact that it's not that way all the time. There's actually a lot of nerves that go into it. And even some games you go in not looking forward to getting in a fight because at the end of the day, you're still fighting. You're throwing yeah. your fists at another guy and getting hit in the face, getting hit in the neck and all that stuff. So could you touch on that a little bit? Because it was such a, a fascinating insight into that element of the game. Yeah. I, I just think, again, people don't realize the the mental gymnastics you have to go through get, leading up to that fight. Like I, I don't know your guys' back history, but I, I bet you there's never been a time in your life when you had to go to sleep saying, I'm going to get into a fist fight tomorrow. Uh, like, <laughs> that's, uh, that's a fact. Yeah. yeah. Wouldn't it be nerve wracking? I got one fight in juniors. Yeah. And I got dummied and I didn't know it was going to happen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now just imagine like amplifying that, knowing like I, I, on a nightly basis would have to go to sleep knowing I'm going to fight someone who's 6'4", 6 6'5", 6 240 pounds and who's a skilled fighter and has done it their whole life. And it was nerve wracking and you, and it wears on you. And it's not something you, you want to happen, but you have to do it in order to keep your job and get that paycheck. Like we were talking about earlier, it's all about the paycheck at that point, you're trying to keep your job. It's my livelihood. So I would have sleepless nights after sleepless nights. And it's, I never really, it's funny how it works because I liked, I enjoyed fighting once the gloves went off. I'm like, good. Yeah. Then I'm in it, yeah. and but the, the hours and days leading up to it, I was a, a mess. I hated it. And everybody I've talked to, for the most part, there are some crazy guys who loved it. And they they just were like, their wires were crossed. Like Steve McIntyre, he's like, I just like fighting. I'm good <laughs> at it. But then you talk to a George LaRock, who was maybe one of the toughest guys ever, arguably. <clears throat> he's like, I couldn't stand it. And to this day, I, I don't like it. And it's just funny. I... I I kind of went both sides. I liked, I fought as a kid quite a bit growing up and I, I, I was good at it, but ugh, the, the nights like before. Like pre-hockey you mean though, right? Or oh under, yeah, like, like in like the bars you, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, exactly, and, right. Because I, I had that mentality of like, you're not messing with my friends like all the time. And so I would, I would protect those guys, but it wasn't great. My wife, it's a funny story. We, it was like three or four years into my career and I was just, again, on hockey fights looking who am I, I think I was going to fight McGratton or, or somebody the next night. And she's like, what are you doing? It was like three or four in the morning. I'm like, I'm just, you know, I'm trying to see how he starts left-handed, right-handed. We'd like to Jersey jab, something like that. And I would watch it over and over. You're an engineer, you know, like you just try yeah, to yeah. analyze it. And she goes, well, how big is he? And I'm like, well, he's six, three, two forty. You know, he's been in the league for a long time. And she goes, okay, well, how big are you? 
And I'm like, well, I'm a 6'8", 270. And she's like, you don't think he's scared of you? And I'm like, oh, yeah, he probably is. And she's yeah. like, go to bed. Yeah. Go to bed. And yeah. I honestly, that <laughs> yeah. was, they just took that one little mind mindset. And I, I slept fine after that. Yeah. I would still do my research, but I, I wasn't as nervous as I used to be because I was like, oh, yeah, they're probably scared, scared I- of me too. I love how your wife's watching the game notes with you. Yeah. Helping you prep mentally. Oh, that's, she hated that's it. Unbelievable. No, she's yeah. like, she wanted to sleep. I was probably keeping her up by tossing and turning right. and like losing yeah. my marbles. So she's like, just easy dummy. Like just go to bed. Yeah. I have a question. Cause I genuinely don't know. And I'm curious. Cause in that piece you had said, um, even during the game, you're, you just want to get the fight out of the way. Yeah. You know, you're like, okay, God, like, let's do it. So if a coach says to you pregame, Hey, we need you to go with this guy during this game. Do you kind of get to call when that, like, are you like, I want to go now? Or like, when, when do they, when do they finally say, do it? Like, do you have any say in that once the game I've starts? I've never had a coach say that to do? me. Never once. Okay. But it's, wow. it's implied, right? So if, if we're yeah. at home and they put out their tough guy and he's like, Johnny, you're up. I'm not like, I, I'm not ah. stupid. I'm like, okay, yep. like, this is where I fight. But I, I've had conversations with coaches and GMs before the season. Once I was established and I just said, you let me do my thing. If I yeah. need to go out, I'll let you know. So I, I've had many times where I turn around and tell the coach, like, it's time. Like, let me go yeah. out. I, I need to do my job now. And he, the most, most part, they're good. And they say, okay, go take care of it. And then we take care of business. So, right. Yeah. Okay. Was there uh, anyone in the league that you felt like you had, uh, I don't want to say a rivalry with, but maybe you scrapped with a few times and you kind of kept the mental notes of, you know, like I got him this time and he got me that time. Was there anyone that you had? George Peros. A good matchup? Yeah, 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 Georgie, we fought a few times, and he got me a couple times, and I got it. It, it started with my first, he was my first fight, and I knocked him out. Like, I buried him good, and we came back and won the game, and he was frustrated, and he came back, busted my nose, and I came back and got him a good time. So, he was a good one. Cam Jansen, I hated fighting just because he was so small, and mm-hmm. we we fought a lot when he was in St. Louis, and I was in Chicago. So those two guys were really kind of my go-to so then when i went to buffalo it was just the toronto guys or in mclaren yeah. we we had yeah as soon as i jumped phil kessel they didn't care for that um at all and then we just had that rivalry so every time we played toronto it was just fight night every single time yeah yep yep uh john you said a bunch of times that uh, you believe the enforcers have a place in this game i completely agree by the way i think it pleases the game it helps protect the stars and and by this isn't your quote. This is me talking now. By the way, if you have if you're concerned about the concussions thing, I think it's the open ice head hunting hits that are ten yeah. x a bigger problem than the fighting. So you know you can leave that alone. But I wanted to ask you with that in mind. It feels like the game is trending away from it a little bit. There's plenty of enforcers left in the league. Revo comes to mind, whatever. But I do think I'm seeing more guys have success who are smaller in stature. Bedard, of course. Um, the Hughes bros, Clayton Keller, so a lot of them we just saw at All-Stars, right? Would you say, wh- wh- why would you say that is? Like, it, I, in my mind, guys that size, when I'm thinking about the league that we all grew up watching, mm-hmm. wouldn't have survived out there, and now they are. Do you feel like that's true well, yeah. in a sense? with Yeah. Just because the, the think- rule changes. I, I was there when they started implementing the hooking, the clutching, the grabbing. Those Those penalties were really cracked down upon. Like, you go back and watch a playoff series from even the late 90s, early 2000s. It's like all out war. You you can't even go yeah. through any any zone without a guy clutching you, grabbing you, holding you. There's there's no room. Now it's those guys are they have free reign to skate wherever they want, and if you touch them, there's a penalty. So I think with the implementation of those penalties, it just opened the floodgates for skill, which is good. I, I thought it was a good change, yeah. and now you're seeing all this amazing skill. And with that being said when coaches are in the minor leagues, they're going to want those guys more often. And Gary's really yeah. cracked down on the fighting. So the juniors doesn't have fighting college as we know does, doesn't have fighting. The AHL yeah. has fighting rules now. So when you start at that down low with those rules, it just, it takes a few years until it gets to the NHL, but that, that's why we're seeing those types of players really take off because they're allowed to now they're able to. Yeah. yeah. And does that mean it's harder and harder for enforcers to make it up all the way or is oh, yeah. it like no there's maybe less roles but there'll always be a place i think it's more a hybrid right like i, I think you're gonna yeah, see sure. guys yeah. now who like a tanner Janot, those types of players who are, are pretty good hockey players but they, they can throw them if 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 they need to i think gone are the days of revo's done like let's he signed yeah. a three-year deal he's a good friend of mine but he'll be the last one around who mm-hmm. is just a strictly a fighter so i think you're gonna see guys who are hybrids who can you know penalty kill you know get get 
15, 20 minutes, but if, if it comes down to it, they can also beat your doors up. But you won't <clears> see the strictly like me, who is just, I'm, I was an assassin. I was out there to, you know, hurt somebody if, if someone stepped right. out of line. But th- I don't think mm-hmm. those days are going to, my, my player's dead. Revo's the last one. Yeah, wow. Changing yeah, the guard it, really, it does yeah. feel like it's Revo and, and Big Rig Maroon. In the yeah, league, sure. Maroon's not well. tough. I, I'm so <laughs> tired of this narrative that Pat Maroon is tough. No. Stop it now. He's he fights Ex- a lot. Explain. He's not. Have you watched any of his fights? They're awful. Yeah, yeah, that's, awful yeah, that's a good egg. point, actually. And he doesn't yep. win any hands down. It's just kind of like my hair is fine. It looks good. He's yeah. he's a gamer, but he doesn't. I just he's a great guy. Don't get me wrong, but he's not in the same class as Ryan Reeves. So let's not even get okay. twisted here. Yeah. Not even that. close. Yeah. So it it is Revo, and then. That's it. I would say like Nick Delorier. The I would say there's a couple other guys around okay. the league who are in that category. If I'm listing off top ten, Maroon's not even on that. Like he's not even top twenty. Wow, you okay. guys, like let's just let's just pump <laughs> yep. the brakes here on that. Yeah, that's good. I love I love yeah, it. Put too. that to bed. Yeah. Um, we're talking about the 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 how the league is just shifting to this. You know, so much skill is prevalent in the league right now. And, you know, we were talking to Biz on Chicklets a little while ago about this. And, Are you just, you always do that? You just name drop people and make me feel terrible <laughs> about myself? You were talking to Sean <laughs> Thor. We're all hanging out at All Star. And, and Paul B. Listen, you, you've, you've been on Chicklets. Like, we're, we're late to the game. I was here. just at home with my kids. So, I, like, it's just making me feel terrible <laughs> again, you guys. Unbelievable. <laughs> Well, no, what I wanted to ask is, you know, I feel like we've been seeing Bedard is a great example here. Bedard has his jaw fracture. He's missing some time. Do you think that there is an element of these maybe smaller, more skill focused guys coming into the league and the physicality hasn't really been there for them in juniors and college, wherever they've played? And there maybe needs to be more of an emphasis on teaching some of these younger skilled guys to learn how to take a hit and really be aware of that physicality that's coming into the NHL. I ideally. Yeah. I, t- I think Tort said it perfectly. He's like, these guys don't know how to take a hit. And yeah. I, I know I, I, I work for the Hawks now or NBC, I should say not for the Hawks. And yeah. you could tell even on that Bedard hit, he wasn't expecting Brendan Smith maybe to step up when he did. Yes. He kind of totally. was entering the zone, expecting to have a little more room and he was vulnerable. And so he, he took a pop and you see it like Jack Hughes that happened to him. Everybody who watches hockey, if, if you're a guy who's a good open ice hitter, you're, you're loving life right now because these guys come across yeah. the middle they're looking for passes or trying to do faint. Like you can really bury guys. So it, the life is good for the hitters right now, but there's not many of them. That's the thing. So it's, it's a dying art. Yeah. And like, why would you learn a skill when you, no one's going to hit you, especially in juniors, there's no hitting in juniors right now. So like, there's no Pat Coletta's out there in the league who yeah, are just murdering guys who just go out there. Yeah. He, Pat didn't want to play hockey. He just wanted to hit guys and he loved it. Yep. Yeah, no, it's true. I, I don't know if you watched in the uh, the World Juniors when Geeky got booted from the game for just a beautiful, beautiful hit. open ice along the boards. Mm-hmm. It, it honestly felt like the refs just weren't expecting yeah, like, what the it. Hell? So they they didn't know what to do. It it's like, like, that was a big hit. We have, there's something must be wrong. Like, we have yeah. to kick this guy out. So <laughs> yeah. I think Hathaway <laughs> got kicked out yeah. in Philly. He, he buried somebody, Garnet Hathaway. Perfectly yep. fine hit. But he, the ref yeah. just didn't know what to do with that much violence. He's like, a, it truly feels like a panic move sometimes yeah. Yeah. with the refs. Yes, They're like, this, I haven't seen that in a while. Uh, you're gone. Yep. <laughs> it's like, what the hell is and going on? And I think here? you'll see the pendulum sw- flip to finally answer. I think they'll start to have to do that once more guys start really getting their jaw broken. Yeah. You know, I think Bedard's yeah. going to yeah, maybe right, learn how to right. take a hit. Not that he doesn't, but Definitely. maybe be a little more cautious. Yeah. No, I, I think absolutely. I think you, you're totally right when that happened. It was one of the situations where obviously, you know, Felino comes in, jumps Brendan Smith, and and there's part of me that's like, Yep, you've got to stick up for your guy. But when I'm looking at Brendan Smith, I'm like, he's like, I just made a great clean. Yeah, what did I do? Yeah. Get yeah. off my ass. So it is an interesting dynamic. Um, so as we said earlier, we're from New England, so we're Bruins guys. And I loved seeing that, you know, you were living in St. Catherine, Ontario, and with all your buddies being Habs fans, Leafs fans. You were a Bruins guy yeah. early and, and Ray Bork was, was your, your number one that you, you know, kind of idolized and looked up to. 
when you got into the league and kept playing for all these different teams, did you kind of maintain a little bit of that love for the Bruins or did it eventually fade away? It uh, was gone immediately um, just because they were one of my biggest rivals. You mentioned Sean Thornton. I battled with him and every time we played Boston, it was, it was a battle, but I, yeah, they were my team growing up. I always tried to play for them, but I never really, they were always so tough. They didn't need me. So it was just one of those things. It didn't, mesh well but yeah i used to love the bruins they were so they were bad back when i watched them kind of but they were just neely and adam Motes and all like samson off it was just so i guess neely wasn't there at that time but yeah no that's gone now i can't go down the street in boston without getting spit on and heckled <laughs> just because i bury louis erickson and dummy sean Thornton, i know so oh dude but that, they don't know they don't know you had that, that ray bork love i remember that louis erickson one. It's cleanest uh, hit i've ever done we... i got seven games for it yeah <laughs> Were you root? Hey, did you root for Ray when he went to Colorado to get that cup? Oh, 100%. 100%. Hell yeah. One that of the best awesome. days of my life was when I got to like go to dinner with Ray Bork. We did like a wow. charity event five years ago, and we were just drinking wine and having dinner. It was so cool. He's the nicest guy. Like, it, but oh. you would never guess he's got like the most points of all time for defensemen. He's just like, it's crazy. Unbelievable. You, you know what, John? We were actually talking about this the other day. I I had gone on some rant talking about how. I think that, you know, legends of teams, it, Crosby is what came up. And and I was like, Crosby's still playing at this elite level. If the Penguins keep missing the playoffs, if he were to ever say, hey, you know, guys, I would love to have another shot at a cup. Is there a world where you could trade me, figure out something for the team and for me? And obviously we saw that with Ray when he went to Colorado. Yeah. And, and I was kind of like, I hate that there are so many fans – who look at that and they're like, oh, that's classless. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's done everything for the franchise. If he wants to go get another cup, that would be great. And we, you know, we posted some clip and I mentioned Ray and Sydney, and and there were tons of comments from these younger fans in their early twenties who were like, this guy puts Ray Bork's name in the same sentence as Sidney Crosby. What an idiot. And I was like, funny. Are you, I was like, are you guys insane? Ray Bork is a, true 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 legend and one of the greatest players of this game it's just it blows my mind some people who just don't no. know about that he's era. in the mount rushmore of defensemen i i, yeah, I easily firmly believe that like he was Absolutely. he's lights out so good yeah the young kids uh don't. john how come how come uh i don't think anyone had 77 on the wild when you got there how come you didn't how come you didn't let it rip i knew you wanted that number as a squirt are you trying to insult me again is this what's happening no dude you got to do it dude. no it was there you, for you. you think i got to pick my number is this is this how this works <laughs> you think that's that's what happened they're going yeah, john pick your number no. yeah next the year two at least no i on. get there and they go this is your number and i go yes it is 36 yes it is yes, thank, <laughs> thank, yes, thank it you is. Thank, thank you very you much. So much yeah yeah <laughs> never well, you forgot the Never got the, you forgot the passport. You forgot the passport the first time. You take whatever number they give you. Yeah, damn right, oh, you know I did. I, yeah. <laughs> you know what I am curious about? Um, which of all of your the teams that you played for, all all the numbers sweaters that you have, which one is your favorite? The numbers? Well, no, more just like the jerseys. Like, what do you think is the you know, the the cleanest jersey? If that, I go into the Hall of Fame, um, yeah, I'd probably yes. wear the Sabres jersey yeah hell yeah clean i like that a lot yeah i love clean. the Sabres jersey i say that all the time it's just That's um awesome. yeah i really enjoy it. and i grew up right next to there so i always used to go to the Sabres game back in the old auditorium so yeah yeah Sabres. all right i want to ask you a question about scoring in the league right now um i pulled up this stat that i thought was interesting 20 uh, in the 2006 seven season crosby had 120 points okay and then no one touched 120 until kucherov did it in 2018 19 he went 123 since then, Drysidel led the league with 110, but it was only in 71 games, so he probably would have gone over. Then McDavid with 105, but in 56 games, so he certainly would have gone over. Then McDavid 123, McDavid 153, Cooch with 85 already this year. It feels like it's going to go way over. I just wanted your opinion on that. Is it, and I, I'm sure a lot of it is what you talked about earlier, where it's, um, they're emphasizing skill. The clutch and grab is gone. These guys can freewheel. But is this the new normal like are we entering an era where it's like you know the eiserman 150 burgers are like going to be normal or are you like oh no it's just it's it's in a lull it's going to come back down like how do you feel about the scoring in the league right now i am i think it'll there'll always be those guys and yeah i think there's more penalties than there ever has been i think the power plays are really really you look at kucherov i think half his points are on the power play it's crazy yeah so it's um no i think it's here to stay you know, I think the players are just really, really good. The skill up yeah, and yeah. down is just 
incredible and there's no weak line. So I do think it's not uncommon to see like six, four, seven, three, you know, eight, five games night in and night out. So I just think this is a new norm. Guys, kids are so good. You guys, like it's crazy. Oh, it's crazy. It's crazy, John. I mean, and you also not to get too technical, but you look at the technology now with the sticks and all that and the workouts these guys are doing and they're, the shots are just getting so quick and absurd. And it's like, I agree. I don't think the scoring is going. Well, when Pedersen has the hardest shot and he weighs like 180 pounds. <laughs> soaking wet. Soaking wet. It's, you know, yeah, like it's the crazy. technology is good. He's got great form, but he's sh- like, that's, he's getting 103, 104 miles yeah. an hour. Like, it's cra- It's like amazing what, what is happening in the NHL right now. Like, it's nuts. The Sens were doing a little, you know, contest thing just in a practice and Chikrin clapped a 107. Did he shot. really? And, like, and like, I'm looking at Chikrin. He's like a quick, small, or, you know, leaner shifty offensive defenseman i'm like jesus yeah, that's crazy. Not acceptable. that's that's, Hell, that's fast shoot? that's very fast. no yeah, yeah. that's crazy. i mean that's like chara style level yeah no i think it, i think it would have been the second fastest ever if they had count you know if it had yeah. been like at the all-star game or something mm-hmm. absolutely um but so yeah on uh, to, to look at the reverse side of it john because i i enjoyed it too you know as i was a forward he was a defenseman but I, you know i'm like yeah bring on the six four games it's a blast for me but I'm sure some of the goalies in today's era are like, yeah, this isn't as ideal <laughs> for, yeah, for us. Cares? Yeah, right. But I'm curious, <laughs> and we talked about this recently. Fuck those goalies. Yeah. Fuck them. <laughs> they, yeah, Blake, he's a goalie. Our producer, Blake, yeah. is a goalie. <laughs> he's he's right now. He's like, yeah. 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 <laughs> but I'm curious, the one thing I think we have seen on that side of it in recent years is the tandem, right? Like, gone mm-hmm. are the days of 60 starts for these tenders. But – the, the adjustment hasn't hit playoffs yet. It's like once these teams get to the playoffs, they will go, well, we hit, here's our guy. Yeah. Do you think we'll get to a stretch where it's like, well, no, giving them extra days off was how we got here. Mm-hmm. We should trade games in the playoffs. Or is that is that just too hard and you'll always ride the hot goal? Well, I think you ride the guy. I don't think a coach has yeah. the cojones to go back and forth. Right. I think it's more so job prevention to say, we're just going to, you won, we're going to stick with you. And then once you lose, then we'll put the other because we've seen that. Yeah, yeah you yeah, know, yeah, I, totally. I think that's just smarter business for the coach because it's it's less culpability almost. Where you like, I'm a, you had a great game, you got to shut up, but we're gonna start him because that's what we did yeah, in the regular yeah. season. I don't, I don't yeah. think that makes a lot of sense to me. And as a player, I I like knowing what goalie was you know going to be in for the next night, the next night, and it, it oh, gives oh, you a on, sense on of your confidence. team. You mean like you want you want to know who who's you got behind you? I yeah. want one goalie. Like, it, it, yep. Ideally, you play with one goalie the whole season because you 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 know right, them, yeah. you get their tendencies. Because goalies are different the way they play the puck, the way they, it's just different. The rebounds, yeah, one goalie's better. So I, I I don't think maybe I don't know, but I, I don't think yeah. you'll get there. No, it's that's cool from the player such a good yeah, point. Yeah, because yeah, well, we talk about uh, Boston, I think, is a great example. I mean, Olmark and Swayman are just, they're both yeah. so good. Either one of them could go at any day. And, and yeah, it's you're right. I think so much of it is on the coach. Because think about all those stories that would come out. Mm-hmm. If, if you're a great team and you go into the playoffs and you go, we've been riding both these guys all year. We're going to ride them both all through playoffs. The second one of them loses, you're now being faced with the like, are you seriously going to go back to him? You know, you got one oh, goalie 100%. who's two and zero, yeah. and another one who's who's zero and two. You're seriously, and it's like Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, you know, you know? I, I just think it would it would lead to way too many questions, way too much doubt, and I love that that aspect from a player of being like, no, I want especially in the playoffs, I want one guy. I want mm-hmm. want one guy in between the pipes well, who just, I know yeah. is going to be in there. Consistency. That makes a ton you of know, sense. I think as a player, you don't want questions and drama and that's the most important position so you want to be able to just especially like around the room you want to be like okay sways our goalie jeremy yep. swayman yep. good we're gonna act like you're our starter we're gonna you know make sure we give you the shots you need and we're gonna like you don't want any gray yeah. area there so especially yeah, in the that's... playoffs and the bruins are terrible in the playoffs we all know that so they they yeah. don't need any distractions you guys they want to be so true yeah it's, it's just so like true. devastating <laughs> how true that is <laughs> it's real though um all right so i mean this past week there was some pretty crazy moves that are made i feel like you know we've got trade deadline coming up stuff stuff's buzzing perry signs with edmonton jets make that big trade for monahan obviously the huge trade to vancouver sending elias lindholm there uh do you think that they're well first of all what do you think about some of those moves because those are three three big teams i feel like edmonton vancouver jets are three of the top four teams in the west right now Curious what you think about how much those moves help those teams. And then if you've got eyes on any other teams that you think that need to make a big move. Yeah. I know you've talked a little bit about this on your pod, John, but curious, you know, 
what maybe you think is the best best move so far. I think honestly, the best move is, is going to sound strange, but it's the Perry one to Edmonton. I think Agree. they had he's been saying that they had a very good top two lines. He's going to go in and he's one of those guys where he's effective wherever you put him. You can give him seven, eight minutes and he's going to make an impact. You can give him 15 yeah. to 20 and he's going to make an impact. You'll be on your power play. I think he really shines in the playoffs. Lindholm will be great. Yeah. Monaghan will be great. Those guys are better overall players, but I think Perry will make the biggest impact to the team. I don't think Vancouver need a Lindholm. It's a luxury. I think Monaghan yeah. was needed by the Jets, but they – they were already good. I think I think Perry puts the Oilers into that category of it. The, the, if they don't win, it, it's it's an upset potentially. I like Edmonton. They're they're pretty solid. Yeah, you you think that this isn't a flash in the pan? You think that they have the legs to go deep? In the I think so. This year? Yeah, I, yeah, I think so. Well, did you see Mc? Were you guys at the All Star game? Did you see McDavid? <laughs> yeah, 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 he's all right. It's, he invented a skills competition to, honestly, set up to win just to embarrass it, the league. He's yeah, like, let's do yeah. these. Yeah, <laughs> isn't it actually? Sometimes it's you know we're we're in this world. We watch games every single day, and he still blows my mind sometimes. Yeah. There are times where I'm genuinely like, I don't get how this guy is doing what he's doing out there. It's well, I don't, yeah, just every, the best players in the world are there. And then he just like makes them look like little kids. Yeah, he was he better at everything. Not better at, yeah, not yeah, better yeah. at speed. Everything. Puck he's handling, speed, everything. stick handling, shooting, everything. Like he's just better at everything. Yeah. Uh, I really like what you said about Lindholm being a luxury. Cause, cause I, I agree that team is so stacked and so deep. Uh, I, I've got eyes on what that means for Vancouver's future. Yeah. Ask like this. I, Ask I think this. I was very prepared for Elias Lindholm to be a rental. I, I thought it was going to be a Patrick Kane, Vladimir Tarasenko of last year, where going to get traded to a contender, making a cup run, but not necessarily an extension is going to come with it. We'll see what happens this summer. The haul that they gave up that, that Vancouver gave up to get him, to me means he must be signing that there must be conversations. And then that also makes me curious about what's going on with Pedersen. Yeah. He's not signed. So there's a lot of interesting things going on. You hearing anything about that? There there's no way they resign him, right? Like he's going to be 30. You have to resign Pedersen. You still have a lot of guys you have to lock up. It's just, they're all in this year. Like they really only have a handful I of agree. guys signed even next year. So maybe, but who do you want? You want Pedersen? You want Lindholm? Like, it's just, uh, yeah. You uh, want Pedersen. I just don't yeah. know if he wants to be there. That's my question. Win the about cup, PD. And he'll be there. Yeah. I yeah, like actually that. fair. That, that, I that like changes that. a lot of attitudes. Um, and then uh, I've got, uh, you know, we've been hearing a lot of rumblings. Markstrom has been kind of rumored to be on the move a lot. And, and we've been hearing some stuff about him possibly going to New Jersey, maybe Hannafin or other people added to that hall. Do you think even with that move, New Jersey can right the ship here and get into the playoffs, or do you think they're done? That that it's so tight in the East that all they need to do is get on a little run, but it's just they need to get healthy. I think I think that's yeah. the only thing. They they have the skill. Can they get healthy in time? I I, I mm -hmm. don't know. Unfortunately, I had them. Obviously, I think everybody had them in the mix oh preseason. I mean, I. Yeah. I had them winning the Met. Yeah. <laughs> and Jesus Christ, I think they're in sixth. So it's unbelievable. Um, but yeah, I, I, they're so interesting to me because that you're so right. The health we talked about that mm -hmm. like, last episode. It's you, you look at the struggles that they've had and and you think about adding a, a guy like a Markstrom. It's like absolutely that makes them better. But it's like if these stars for them, Heisher and Jack are just still hurt. What do you think? There's is no change? point. Right. Exactly. And then is yep. Markstrom that much better? The Vanacek and Schmid, maybe a, I think oh, he is, but yep, yep. No, it's a fair question, and he's older, and it's, that's what I'm know, saying. It's, like the ceiling's something. higher, but you don't, you're not guaranteed to get that ceiling all through a playoff. Because last yeah, year he was know. hot, hot garbage, and he was terrible. Yeah, and you right. couldn't like yep. give him away. So I don't know. I, I hope they make it. They're a fun team. They. I don't I know, know what Dougie Hamilton's situation is. If he's back, I, I have no clue what his deal is. Yeah, yeah they he's pretty banged up. He's got a, I think it's a collarbone or, or it's a peck. That's right. He tore his peck, peck. And that's like a God, who knows if that's how a big soon one. He could possibly. Yeah. That's right. Not good. Especially mm -hmm. with his game. Like that's devastating. Uh, wait, but I wanted to ask about Perry real quick. Do you think um, the Oilers will do anything else? Like I, when they got yeah. Perry, I was kind of like, that was their big ad. Do you think they'll add D or something like that? No, I, I think they'll get a goalie. I think you have to oh, address really? that situation. I know Skinner's a starter. Wow. Skinner is a starter. You have to get someone to back him up. 
just as like okay. a safety net because we saw in years past that's been their Achilles mm-hmm. heel, Mike Smith, the Jones, every Campbell. Yep. They need to have some kind of backup for him. So it wouldn't surprise me if they get a veteran goaltender kind of just ride shotgun with him. That's okay. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. Love that call. You, so you just mentioned it with them. Who do you like this year? Like, do you think is uh, Oilers is your team from the West going to the cup? You think? Uh, no, I don't love their defense. I think Vancouver is my team. Yeah. Really? Even with kind of no playoff experience for this core, no weakness that I can see on that yeah. team. I think they're deep. I, I think they're D are great. They're yep. Demko's a real deal. And yeah. I, I, I mean, we, we mentioned it. I feel like it happened in the dead of night and people didn't know it. I think that Zadorov ad on oh, defense was so huge 100%. and people were just kind of like, Oh yeah, shit. That's a crazy move. And it just, it happened early. So people aren't considering it like a deadline move. But it's even better because he's got more time with chemistry. He's such a good defensive player. I love that one. I said it a little while ago. I think they, in that locker room, they are Western Conference Finals or bust for sure. Yeah. Regardless of experience. Do you think that matters, matter. Sean? The play, like you know, they they haven't had a playoff run yet, no. or is it that matters less? Okay. No, yeah. nobody. I had Zadorov. I'll, I'll I'll drop a little name. I had him on my show yeah. about a month ago, like two weeks after he got traded there. And his yeah. mentality is perfect for that team. He just doesn't – he's all business. And he will just drag guys to a win. He's he's a, yeah, he's the guy you want on your team. And then we had Connor awesome. Garland on too. We're the Vancouver Canucks show. That's, yeah. that's why <laughs> all we have is I Canucks players. But, no, yeah. they're a good team. And then know. what about the East? Panthers are all business, right? Come on. I know. Panthers, yeah, they'll be good. It's, is, is it Tampa Bay's, Toronto's? Who knows? Bo- Boston won't be around. I'm sorry. They, no. Yeah. I don't know. Do you <laughs> trust right. Boston so in the, first place? No, no, no I don't. No, I don't. I, I, listen, I really don't. I think that they – I'm fucking so rattled by this Boston sucks in the playoffs because it's just true. Yeah. And yeah. Then, um, I, I think that they are f- phenomenal team, but for me – it's Swayman and Olmark. That's why they're this good. That's yeah. why that they're they're in first place. And as it always happens, you have this team. Pasta has what seventy percent of your goals yeah. this year. You go up against a team in the playoffs, and they have every day of game notes to to prep against you to figure out how you're playing, check your zone entry, all that stuff. I don't care if you have Dominic Kasich and Martin Brodeur in net. It's like that is. It's just a lot for a team to deal with. You so. don't think Jake DeBrusque has it in him? <laughs> to, to, to level up <laughs> uh, what's funny is i think i think jake will go three games in a row where he'll score five goals a games and and then he'll go the next 15 games and not sniff the but those three so games are beautiful oh it's, oh, a, it's, it's a joy to watch i i, I all that it's whole that whole draft is forgiven when he does that god but it's i do think funny. it's an atlantic team though john i do think it, it, it an atlantic team's coming out of the east i, I don't trust anybody yeah, in the met i agree i think it's tampa's looking strong toronto's always yep. there and then yep. i don't know i agree I agree. Atlantic team yeah. for yeah, sure. Yeah, Florida's all right. Florida's amazing. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're okay. incredible. Well, I think we got to let you go, John, to um to scoop the kids. I got so many but kids before... I got to pick up. I'm sorry. You gotta, you gotta, yeah. It's going to no, take no. an hour. Uh, but... But, uh, before we let you go to, to go do the, the fatherly duties, is there anything that we can do to roll out the red carpet for you? Anything you want to plug? Anything you want to shout out? Yeah, tell everyone about the pod and your TV stuff. No, nope. I'm good. Come on. Get out of here. Come on. <laughs> Tell people about the pod. I have a podcast. It's the second best one behind your guys's uh, drop in the gloves. I'm sure. Yeah. If you like, if you like empty and editors, you won't like mine. So no, not true. Not true. It's every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, right? You guys yeah. are good. Yeah. We do it three yeah, days no, a week. We get players. We show. just do random stuff. So it's fun. Yeah. Not as good as you guys. It's though. a great show. No, everybody give it a listen. You'll have a blast. Hence the it's, big um, sponsors, Bud Light or Blue Light, Southern Comfort. Labatt Blue Light, Southern Comfort. Yeah. Yep. Bet MGM. Yep, we a lot of ad reads over here. Yeah. I have none <laughs> at all. We don't have that's the one thing we are going for us. No ad reads. So just straight there we go. that is clean. Yeah, there we, there go. we go. Yeah. That's beautiful. Um, all right. Well, John, this has been a blast. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh hopefully we can get you to pop on again soon. And uh w- hey, we'll be in uh we'll be in Michigan this weekend. So oh, yeah. whereabouts? We're uh, headed to Detroit. So we got plenty of time. Maybe what do you we'll do? Are you away. going to the Red Wings and doing something for them? Unbelievable. Yeah, we're- nope. Nope, we're just going to Detroit to hang out with our friends. No name drops. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Fair enough. No, no. Tell me now. You've 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 lit that fire. Who are your friends? Uh, we're gonna head over to to Detroit, uh, do some stuff with the Wings, and um, uh, get some stuff going with Dylan Larkin. He's a good buddy. How the hell do I get any of this? Unbelievable. Good for you guys. You That's start, awesome. You come you gotta, on. You come on yeah. with him. Yeah. You gotta just start traveling with us. There you go. Ask him about the 2016 All Star Game. That's when he won fastest skater, and I was there. 
and he cheated because he took a, a zone head start. He started at Correct. the blue line. Yep. He got a they running don't allow start that anymore. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Interesting. All right. I mean, it's still the record, right? I will. Ask Shouldn't him be. About that. Asterix. I know. Yeah. Asterix, Asterix everywhere. <laughs> yep. Yeah. All Fuck right, you, fellas. Dylan. Good luck. Keep, you guys are great. Thank you for having me on. Thank you. Thanks Tom. so much, John. Appreciate it. Cheers. It is the heart of hockey season right now, and you already know that we've teamed up with BetMGM this season, the hands down best betting app in the game. If you don't already have it, get on board right now because, like I said, playoffs are around the corner. We're going to have some of the best games, the most exciting games going, and you've got to get in on the action. And BetMGM is the best partner you could ever possibly have. And here's the deal if you don't have the app yet, we've got a great situation for you. You're going to download that app and you're going to use the promo code NETTERS150 and you're going to get $150 if you just deposit $5. You're getting that 150 buckaroos on your next wager. No matter the outcome, it is a no-brainer. Just remember to use NETTERS150 when you download and get signed up. Get in on the action with us. We're talking about it all season long. It is the best way to play. Disclaimer. See BetMGM.com for terms. U.S. promotional offers not available in D.C., Mississippi, New York, Nevada, Ontario, or Puerto Rico. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Available in the U.S. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369 in New York. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP in Arizona. 1-800-327-5050 in Massachusetts. 1-800-BETS-OFF in Iowa. 1-800-270-270. 7117 for confidential help in Michigan. 1-800-981-0023 in Puerto Rico. First bet offer for new customers only in partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. Okay, we are pleased to welcome on the Empty Netters podcast a Yotabora native, <laughs> a World Junior bronze medalist, a Gretzky Cup silver medalist, a U18 gold medalist, the fourth overall pick by the Detroit Red Wings, and the second teenager to score a hat trick in Red Wings history, Lucas Raymond. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. That's How is the pronunciation? That was pretty good. That not was, bad, right? No, it was not bad at all. I've got more coming your way. Yeah. I, I was going to do it, and I was so like, I can't. Hopefully, <laughs> I warm up here, but yeah. I felt pretty solid about it. Yeah, that That's was pretty nice. good. I've heard much worse. <laughs> I've heard much worse. Um, how was break, dude? What'd you do? Uh, it was good. Um, was down in Cabo, Mexico. Uh, actually, first time down there, so it was uh, it was a great time. Just relaxing you know hanging out with the guys getting some golf it was, it was great how's the golf game yeah uh well there wasn't great to be <laughs> honest with you i haven't swung it in a while but uh, usually it's it's pretty good um I try to play a lot in the summers but you usually you know lose it during the season but yeah uh yeah it's okay what Decent. what kind of handicap are you carrying right now uh, I like to say I have a Swedish one and an american one because every Smart. time I, <laughs> every time i come here and play with the guys i get destroyed but um probably around eight somewhere around that that's solid yeah that's solid is larks uh carrying the best one on the team right now no he was before uh, well i think fisher he's, he's oh really, shit yeah yeah, yeah. He's, he's a player um but larks is a great golfer too we have a couple actually like copper is really good yeah larks obviously fish um a couple more goes good um Benny Shiraz good too. Like DP, we have a we have a lot of good guys. I bet I could see DP being. Yeah, solid. yeah. He's been around. Dude. Wait, what kind of games you guys playing? Different. Usually, it could be all different. Um, best ball, worst ball. Yep. Like, uh, just best score. Everyone against each other. We did one. I don't know. It's an American name, so I don't know what. But it's like some weird point system you do. Like every hole, <laughs> like. You pick a partner. It's probably Wolf. Wolf. Well, that's oh, the name. Wolf. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. Love Wolf, Wolf is gas. So like yeah. once you figure it out, yeah, it's pretty sick. Yeah. yeah. No, I liked it, but it took a while to figure out. Yeah. But uh, it's uh, just different types of games. Yeah. I mean, Dude, was um Cat jealous on the group chat when he was yeah. the only one? And I imagine tons of you boys were down in Kappa. <laughs> yeah, probably a little bit. Uh, but I think he had a lot of fun. Yeah. But for sure. uh, he wheeled too. He dude, he kind of lit it up. I actually he thought was... he got robbed of MVP. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, they're giving the oh, hometown dude, boys. This hometown is cooking on that MVP for sure. <laughs> yeah. No question. He was good. We watched some of the highlights down there and watched him, and uh, he seemed to like it a lot. And seeing this kid too, that was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's sick. Dude, how necessary is that break and that little vacation yeah, for you uh, guys? Like, uh, I don't think we, we talked about it a lot. We talked about it on a couple episodes ago. It's like, 
I don't think people really appreciate the grind that the season is. Yeah. And, and how you know, little time off you yeah. have in the season. Like, there exactly. are no gaps. Yeah. So, like, are you guys, I mean, obviously, to make an All-Star game is incredible. You're going to make a bunch of them. But is it re- a really welcome break when you're like, fuck yeah, I can just, like, take a few days off? Yeah. Like, uh, this year's like, I've gone torched for it. But the previous <laughs> two years, I was actually staying in Detroit. So I was what? staying here. <laughs> just, like... Wanted Dude. to chill? Or yeah, what, what I don't know. I don't want to talk about it. Me and Mo, <laughs> uh, looking back, maybe not the greatest decision, but, like, I think my thought process was, like, okay, like, I'm going to stay here, you know? Like, we'll do stuff, but uh, so this like year... Like, fun I, stuff? You're, like, we're going to relax? Yeah, yeah. like, <laughs> we were relaxing. Like, we would, like, play tennis or try to and, like, you know, stuff like that, dinners, but this year I actually went somewhere and it was huge. Like, I felt a huge difference. And, yeah. like you said, like, you play so many games and... We went to Sweden too, so like our schedule yeah, was kind of crazy, like yep. trying to catch up. Um, so just to get away and like just see different things and try not to think about hockey, I think that's you know huge. And uh, but at the same time, you also like start missing it a little bit. You're like, sure. okay, like yeah, no doubt, it'll be fun to get back. So it's been it's been really good, and hopefully it works out. Yeah, <laughs> dude, we were actually talking about the. Uh, when you're on a heater as a team, like the Oilers were, right. yeah, I feel like when this break comes, you're almost like, Don't fuck, want it. this yeah. is terrible timing, and then bang, they lose to Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost real. That's such a good point. The as jealous as I am of your Cabo trip, I got to tell you, we got to play in a three-on-three tournament in Toronto oh. with All-Star jersey. <laughs> oh, yeah, true. So, dude, we've made an All-Star game, <laughs> just so just to be clear. Yeah. So, you know, you something you aspire to next year when you're thinking about it, be like, yo, CP, DP. Was that, was that the All-Star. outdoor one? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I saw videos of that. Yeah. That looked sick. Dude, I, I couldn't believe see. the jersey. Yeah. Like, we signed up, or they asked us to play, and I was like, yeah, great. We fill out all this stuff. You know, it's like jersey number or whatever. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, cool. They're going to give us, like, a penny. Yeah. And I get there, and it's, like, fresh as hell, like an NHL All-Star jersey. <laughs> I was like, what? Dude, it's, I'm sure there's areas in sweden that are same way but like yeah. the multiple odrs in canada yeah, so is sick. hard yeah. to beat. like it's sick when you're just driving around you're like oh there's one there's yep. one there's one sick, it's fucking yeah. sick what yeah. numbers did you guys go with okay good question dan <laughs> we have a buddy that we play with all the time right yeah. and his name's johnny great dude he always picks 66 every yeah. time we're doing custom jerseys and we always make fun of him for it <laughs> so he picks 66 for this yeah. and then dan we're we grew up near boston right yeah. so we're bruins fans yeah. dan plays d so he was like, oh, Johnny took 66. I'm going to take 77 for Ray Bork and yeah, whatever. Yeah. And they got the symmetry going. And they're looking at me. And I was like, I guess I got to go 88. <laughs> <laughs> so he went 66, 77, That's a wild, wild play. Oh, was dude, it was, it was so <laughs> interesting <laughs> seeing the three of us plugs wheel out in those joke, iconic dude. numbers. Oh. Fucking brutal. Oh, unbelievable. Unbelievable. All right. Yeah. Anyway, let's, let's, I'm going to zoom back. Okay. Yeah. U18s, 2019. You got hosting, Sweden hosting. You guys show up, and there's that year was like that stacked U.S. team. I think Jack maybe led the tournament points. Cole was MVP. Yeah. Um, Canada won their group. U.S. won. You're beat. You got your guys' only loss was to that U.S. team. Those kind of look like the favorites. They're getting all the hype. You guys upset Canada in the semis, right? Yeah. U.S. gets upset by Russia. Sweden Russia final. And what do you do? Just have a Hattie in the gold medal game. <laughs> First goal of the game. Game tire in the third, yeah. OT winner, dude. No U18 team had ever won a gold medal. You guys pulled off in your home country. Just, I mean, tell me about that. What was that game like? What was that moment like? It was, it was crazy. It was sick, actually. Uh, like you said, like, you in Sweden, it's different. Like, it's not like in the U.S. Like, you'll play national team, but it's usually like different. Like, it's whoever's been good that year, kind of. Um, but we had played with each other for a long time, and we've always, like, we never really were the top team in, in the tournaments. U.S. was obviously always, yeah. every, always good, and the Canada team, Russia. So um, I think we just, like, even though we were playing at home, we weren't the favorites at all. Like, right. we just went out there and played, and then obviously with the, with the fans, that helped a lot. And, um, yeah, it was, it was crazy. Just everything, family, friends, like, Swedish fans. It was, uh, it was a sick tournament. Yeah, and I mean, imagine, because I think I had read the Sedin brothers maybe won something in 2013, yeah. like a world championship maybe. That was the last time any Sweden team had won at home. Yeah. So to be able to do that just must have been, you know, icing on the cake. Yeah, no, it was fun. And it was also, what was sick was like a lot of the equipment managers and like physios sick. and stuff like that. I've been around for a very, very long time. So they've been through all that. And yeah. like for them to, to, you know, to experience that with them as well. That was, that was a lot of fun. For yeah. Sure. You guys did beat a wagon of a team. Like, Dude, I, 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 I run. Yeah. Like I know you're probably, you know, on to the next, like you're trying to win a Stanley cup now, but 
I would look back at that tournament and the guys in the league on USA particularly yeah. and be like, that was a big win. Dude, which which was it the first? Which one was the inside outside? Was that, that was your first, first goal? Yeah, yeah. It's so that disgusting, dude. Yeah. I just can't that believe I can't yeah. believe that. I was like watching the highlights of that game and I just like played that one back 15 times. Yeah. It was ridiculous. No, it was fun. Yeah. Was fun. Tell me about dish a little dirt. Like what'd you guys get up to after? The crazy thing is almost nothing because yeah. like the city we were in, I wish we did. Uh, I'd love to tell it, but uh, the city we were in is like up north. Like it's not a very big city. Yeah. And I think it was like on a, it wasn't a Friday or a Saturday. Oh, fair, right. It was like some day I was like, I had my parents there too. And like, they're all, I wasn't 18 at that point, but obviously you would have done something. So like afterwards we went out and it was just like empty. Like yeah. there wasn't yeah. even it's a, a Tuesday. It wasn't even, <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, yeah, it wasn't yeah. even a bar open. Yeah. Like, uh, so. I feel like they should have like, you know, someplace yeah. should have opened up, especially saying, for you yeah, guys. Yeah, what the hell's going on I here? know. They're not fading us, I guess. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> they're taking down the yeah. Russia banner. Like, <laughs> like, oh, oh, yeah. Close, yeah. just close. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was fun, though. Like, we did, I remember we went to, like, we had this, like, it was, like, a smaller hotel. So it was okay. only us there. So we That's did. That's kind of fun. It was, that was fun. So, like, we did something there and, like, partied, whatever. Like, you, it wasn't really anything. And, like, the coaches were there and, like, they were like, yeah, you guys can't drink, whatever. And we were like, Even yeah. after? Come on. And, like. Yeah, and I think some guys were 18 at that point. I was younger. Some yeah. guys were 18, and they went, like went out to get some beers, but nothing was open. Yeah. Like, and there it's like where you can buy in Sweden. You can't buy at like gas stations or anything. Okay, it's a special store, uh, so that was obviously close. So like it was, I mean, just chill, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> went home at like seven. The bus was the next morning. So. Yeah, just that's kind of awesome though. Like you sit there and you probably, you guys probably were just like, "Fuck, that yeah. was nuts!" Like, well, you dude, know, the amount of rehashing of the game that I do during beer league <laughs> when I'm like, "Boy, we're in the locker room." I'm like, "Boy, did you see that one pass I made in the second period?" <laughs> I imagine you guys at least got that experience yeah. where everyone in the hotel room just reminiscing on all the greatest moments. For sure, for sure. I remember during that tournament, we played so much Fortnite. Yeah, hell yeah. Nuts. Like we, we played Fortnite all the time. So like we probably did that just like. But at that age, you're like, you can have fun with yep. anything. Oh, my God. You know, yeah, like, true. you can do anything. It'll be fun. So, uh, yeah, it was, it was fun. Guys are just playing, like, knee hockey in the hallways. Dude, yeah. That's Two liter I, Mountain Dew. 100%. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Honestly, I'm thinking about that right now, which we should do this after. Yeah. And, <laughs> and listen, announcement to everyone, all the bar owners and restaurant owners and liquor store owners in Sweden listening to this. Next time you're one of your yeah, IHF team yeah. wins gold Dude, at home, yeah. we'll yeah. Yeah. loose. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, fair, you got to be open for the boys out there. Agree. Yeah. Agree. Yeah. Um, well, dude, obviously you had an unbelievable performance in that game and it kind of brings up this topic that comes up with you all the time. Um, your old for Linda coach, Tobias Johansson has said that you are like the best big game player he's ever seen. And he's not the only one. It's every level you've played at every coach you've had family, friends are always say that you elevate on the big stage better than anyone they've ever seen. And I'm curious what you think it is about your game and your mentality that does that because it is true, dude. Like, you know, you do that in the U18s. You then come to Detroit and you have all these insane records, like second, you know, uh, teenager ever to have a hat trick. You've got all these records that the only other two that you're sharing them with are Iserman and Gordy Howe. Yeah. So, like, pretty good company. So what do you think it is about your game that makes you able to do that? Uh, that's a tough question. Uh, I don't know. You know, I think uh, growing up, I th the most fun games were always, like, you know, when you play like junior tournaments, it was always like the semifinals, the finals, yeah, yeah. like when it meant something. Yeah. And, um, so I think I think it just comes from me thinking that that, that it's fun, you know, not uh, not really feeling any pressure, just like trying to have fun with it and play your game. And um, you know, I'm very I'm a very competitive person, so I think that plays a big part of it. Just like. You know, growing up, I I have an older brother. We usually compete in everything we still do, but uh, maybe a bit more childish when we were younger. But yeah. I think it just comes from that, just, you know, wanting to win and, you know, trying to, trying to compete as much as possible. Well, dude, it's interesting because speaking of Hugo, he actually has said that you are more competitive with your mom than yeah. anyone else. Yes. Uh, What's that about? I don't know. Like, when I was a younger, I was a snap show, too. Like, yeah. I would, <laughs> it would be the weirdest things that I would just like compete like i've nothing uh so with my mom it could be anything and she's probably the same way too or she is the same way yeah so you get it yeah yeah so 
Um, and I was younger. They probably were like playing whatever. It could be playing cards, like yeah, anything. It could get could get a little wild, but um, I think that's fun. So there was yeah. nothing in particular that you and your mom went head to head at all the time. It was just like everything. anything yeah. that was going <laughs> on. Ba- yeah, like a lot of things. I'd say like it could be playing cards when I was younger, just playing cards for fun, home with the family. It could get a little wild, and you know, just arguments like anything. And when I was one too, it was it was fun, but. Um, not anything particular, I don't think. It's like small things all the time. Probably. Yeah. Well, I mean, I can relate, dude. I, oh, yeah. I can't play a fucking board game without I'm wanting to do friendships over it's beach impossible. games. Yeah. Like, why lose? Yeah. That's my whole... <laughs> yeah. It's like, if we're going to do something, if I'm going to put my time into it, I want to win. I've had to quit <laughs> playing some casual games because i'm like oh yeah you are never going to speak to me again no. if this continues yeah it's like even golf dude yeah. like, oh I, my God. I struggle with golf yeah because i'm like if i don't shoot a fucking 68 i'm gonna kill someone <laughs> and people are like you've never sniffed a 68 in your life yeah. so shut the fuck up it's crazy uh one word you said there was pressure which i love because well my, i remember i'm a plug but i remember in mites or squirts or something we had won a championship in our little like seacoast division yeah. and i had a great game in the championship and then the next year i remember one of my boys being like dude do that every game and i was like well i was fired up dude yeah. it's the championship you know and i think pressure is a, a way to to view that right like the way you yeah. said you're like it's a big game but instead of feeling the pressure you just kind of feel the fun yeah do you think you all you have always responded well to pressure like that uh, I mean, I think so. I think it's also about like finding stuff that like ticks you off. Like, yeah, nice. Uh, obviously, like it's easy in like big games because then you everyone has something to play for and yeah. everyone is like super motivated, right? Uh, so it's, I think it's about like also finding that in all the games, you know, like in the regular season, all everything you play, just trying to trying to find ways to to you know stay motivated and find that extra extra edge i think that's a big thing do you think that's translated to the nhl yeah for sure for sure uh that's a big thing too like you come to the the here and it's 82 games like it's the schedule is crazy and Mm -hmm. like your body and uh mentally right so i think that's even more important than like to try to find ways every night to to bring it yeah. That's now, is it true? Point, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Is it true that when you were seven, you used to rip pucks at your coach and then hide behind your teammates? <laughs> I don't know who told you that, but yeah, I guess yeah. <laughs> you did do that? Yeah. <laughs> no comment. Dude. No. Uh, I liked my coach. I want to put that out there. We had a lot of fun, but uh, probably uh, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I imagine you're not doing that now. I'm definitely not doing that <laughs> nope. now. No. <laughs> no. Uh, let's let's talk global series. You mentioned yeah. you guys were in Sweden earlier. Um, obviously, special, very special experience for everybody, but certainly for you. Um, didn't get the results you guys want. We do. We actually had a ton of money on you guys in the Ottawa oh, game, uh, and the you go down for nothing, right? Yeah. And we were like, "Ah, oh, it's over." And then you guys come roaring back, and we were like, <laughs> "High five into the bar and everything." It was it made crazy. it so sick. It was yeah, fucking amazing. It was so exciting. But one thing I thought was so cool was the global series goes there in 2018. And, you know, Connor McDavid's walking around your hometown and you get to see what a cool thing it is that the NHL's here. Yeah. And then flash forward a few years, you are one of those stars that young kids where you grew up are looking at you like, wow, that's what I want to be someday. So first question is just like, have you been able to reflect on that at all? How did that feel? It was it was nice. It was a lot of fun. Uh, like when Edmonton, I think it was Edmonton, Jersey, right? It yeah. Played in my hometown. I remember it was, I was at the game and I live in the city, so I would see those guys walking around and just remembering how cool that was. So when we got the chance to go there, I, I was really excited. Uh, were they playing in the Ferlunda barn? No, they were playing at Scandinavian. That's right. The that's big right, one. Right. The yep. big one. Um, so, yeah, like when I went there, it was an awesome experience. And I think all the guys liked it as well. Uh, it was just like a bunch of different things, being able to show the guys Sweden, like yeah. just the culture there. And then obviously being able to, um, you know, try to do as much as possible for – for like you said, kids and, and yeah. stuff like that when you're there and like trying to, uh, you know, show off the game to them. I think that was a crazy experience. Yeah, Dude, I mean, surreal moment for yeah. you. Yeah. The boys on the team wouldn't shut up about all the restaurants you took them to. Yeah. So like, is that a passion of yours? How yeah, were you, you such you take a good them? tour guide? Yeah, no, it's, I mean, I, I, to be honest, I had a little bit of help from, yeah, okay. from a, <laughs> Love from that. a guy. Dude, but know. like, as is your right, you yeah, gotta, you no, gotta wave in the hometown. Yeah. Home. And it's tough, man, getting 25 <laughs> yeah, hockey right. dudes <laughs> and they don't like, they don't want to eat at the local, I don't know. It was, it was tough, but we had a lot of fun. Yeah. And uh, the guy helping me in, in Stockholm, he did a great job of just setting everything up. And 
Uh, like the biggest issue was like the amount of food, right? Because yeah. like they said like, okay, this should be enough. And I looked at us like, this is, this is not going to be enough. Yeah, yeah. This is like, a starter. <laughs> yeah. Like guys eat. Um, but we had a great time. Like, and it's also like none, none of them have their families. Like, mm -hmm. so like you only hang out with each other, which was great for us. I think as a team too, like looking back, coming back after that, I think, uh, that helps us a lot. Okay, well, actually, I wanted to ask something about who is the most adventurous eater, but since you just brought that up, yeah. I wanted to ask you this too. We had said, when, when you got, before you guys left, yeah. we had said, going all the way back to that Bruin Stanley Cup, where they, where, did they, where were they? In the I shack, think, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yep, they in but check. the point is, I've seen across all sports, when teams kind of go on that huge international road trip, they always come back with like, man, we're so bonded. Yeah. This team's going to do something special. So I wanted to ask if, if you, it felt that way for you guys. And it sounds like it did. Yeah, it did. Like, because you, like, obviously we spend every day with each other yeah. almost, except for a couple of days a month. So you're around each other, but it's also like, it's the same. You come into the rank, you practice, like, yep. you, hey. Uh, so like, go there, you're having dinner with each other, lunch, you're doing th things in the day, like, all of that stuff. I think that was, that was, big for us and I everyone really felt that it brought the, the team closer together. you're still feeling it now I'm yeah, sure. yeah for sure for amazing sure. okay so then back to my original question who yeah. was the most adventurous eater on the squad and who was who was terrified of everything uh that's a tough one like we tried some Swedish like uh it's called the Toskagen Okay. It's like it's Scoggin, cold. Dude, it's great. It's yeah. shrimp toast. Have you tried it? Ah, fuck yeah. It's dude. so good. It's I amazing. love it. Oh, what I have it. Have? I have it in yeah. my fridge at home. Yeah. You do? Yeah. yeah. That's he's, nice. he's dude, Swedish I'm a big Midsommar guy. Yeah. Too, really? So yeah, yeah. We're going to get into that. Yeah. We tried that, and a couple guys were like, oh, I don't know, blah, blah, blah. But then a couple guys were like, oh, shit, this is. Yeah, I good. love this. <laughs> oh, I love God, this. Uh, so it was like, we, I also, we ate a lot of like meat, pasta, like Asian fusion. So it wasn't like a lot of crazy crazy meals yeah. either but uh, no, no i'd say most horse. of the guys no yeah <laughs> i say most of the guys uh tried almost everything okay did you feel like uh you know you've talked about this a lot with how it's pretty amazing getting drafted by the wings when they have a history of unbelievable swedish players did you feel like when you got to sweden with the team there was a noticeable reception from people in sweden being like the detroit red wings are here or do you think it was kind of partially because of you yeah, or yeah. just like in general it's just cool to have nhlers there no i you could really feel it like i feel i felt like us toronto yep yep like you could really notice that uh especially like you know all the Swedes that have played in the red wings yeah it's i awesome. feel like red wings are probably the biggest team in sweden by like nfl nhl fans uh so you could really feel that and then also detroit there was a lot of fans from detroit who flew to Gothenburg. Oh, sick. Yeah, so like That's really when cool. we played, it was like a, not a home game, obviously, but it was like, I was expecting like the crowd to be a little bit more quiet maybe because the, there's not really these fans there who like really cheer for a team. Uh, but there was a lot of Detroit fans, a lot of Toronto fans as well. So like when we played Toronto, that was a sick game. Oh, wow, yeah. 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 Even the Ottawa game was a lot of fun, obviously. Oh, no doubt, dude. The, the Toronto, Toronto game in particular was, was a lot of fun. Did you, uh, did you go bankrupt giving away tickets? <laughs> yeah, close to it. <laughs> <laughs> close to it. I'll financially recover from No, this. <laughs> close to it. I was for sure not playing free. I was paying to play, but yeah. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was totally worth it, though. Like, of course, dude, yeah. All the family and stuff. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a lot sick. of fun for sure. Epic. Dude, I, I obviously you're gonna say this regardless because yeah. you're smart. But when you got drafted by the Red Wings with all that history that we just talked about, was there an added element of you that was like, oh fuck yeah? Like I, I mean, the dream is to make it to the NHL. Then you get drafted by an original six team that's on the come up in a big way, and it happens to be the Wings. That must have been extra special. It was, it was for sure. And even like my dad was like super excited because yeah. like the NHL players that he knew was like all the Swedes that are playing yeah, with yeah. the Red Wings, right? So um, get drafted by the Red Wings was for sure. Best thing that, that could have happened. And then just the aftermath too, like being able to, to talk with those guys. Like I had a lot of communication with Cromwell right after I was drafted. And uh, that was sick just talking to him. And it was crazy like, He's a guy that you like watch highlights of, right, yeah. on your phone, yeah, like Stanley yeah. Cup winner, and everyone knows him. And then I'm on the phone with him like weekly, and he's just chatting to me like I'm just a guy, yeah, just like anyone. He's telling stories and like, um, so like that was really cool and something that that you for sure take with you. Definitely. What was the best piece of advice that he gave? Yeah, you great question. Coming into the league, uh, you know, I think the the biggest thing he was like 
just play your game, yeah. you know, like just play your game and, you know, be humble and work hard. I think that's like, it's so cliche. Like everyone says it, but it's like, it's, it's what's work. What, yeah, what yeah. works. They say it for a reason. Yeah. Like, and I think the biggest thing is just play your game, you know, like, yeah. um, they drafted me because of the player I, I was not, um, uh, you know, so don't try to change that. Just play your game and try to elevate it. Yeah, you're right. And it is, you know, you could look at that as cliche or, or something that's so obvious, but yeah. you're so right, man. It's like when you get to this next level, it's so easy to be like, oh shit, you know, this team wants me to be a, a penalty killer or they yeah, want me right. to be a grinder down low in the boards and shit like that. And you can just completely flip what's worked for you your whole yeah. career. So to have a legend like that, not only in the league, but someone who's from the same country as you, who played for the same team that you're about to play for, giving you that reassurance yeah. must must have gone miles for you. That's amazing. Yeah, it was fun. And even like when you like when I came here, started playing, and then like Zetterberg comes around and Lidstrom, yeah, Holmstrom, Erickson, like all those guys, you're like, wow. And they're just like I said, talking to you like you're like they're nothing you yeah. know they're just like regular guys so you guys are just boys now yeah <laughs> you're it was, like, what the it was fuck? Awesome. and it, it must awesome. mean something to you too to kind of be continuing that legacy you know not i'm not saying you're like yeah. putting yourself in that category already which i think you're going that way but that must be a cool feeling just to be like okay here we go i'm i'm next in line yeah like that was a big thing too like coming here you could really feel the history of swedes here in detroit too like yeah that they kind of paved the way yeah for for guys coming after so uh you know i've loved detroit and um you know you have a lot of things like you hear a lot of things about detroit coming in here about the city and stuff and mm -hmm. since i got here it's been it's been awesome and the yeah. fans are incredible like yeah, you watch God. eight mile one time and you're like where yeah. the fuck <laughs> am i headed <laughs> and it's sick yeah, yeah. And then i look out the window the ball awesome. parks there everything's amazing dude yeah. yeah um two years ago it was so unbelievable watching i mean following you in training camp and all that and all the stories about making the team and then you burst in and have this unreal rookie year it was extra special yeah. seeing you do it with Mo. And that was just such a cool thing. It's like, you know, if you're a fan of the league, it's always sick to see new talent come in, to see a, you know, shining forward that we're going to watch for the next 20 years and then a defenseman at the same time on the same team. So cool. And then to hear that you guys were just like buds living together. Yeah. Even cooler. So talk about, A, the experience of how much easier it was living with him, being able to go through those motions with someone like that. And then also the bullshit you guys got up to living together yeah. as just two rookies in the league living yeah. in Detroit for the first time. <laughs> uh, well, it was awesome. Because uh, like you said, both of us were kind of going through the same thing. Yeah. Like it was our first year. We were young. We were new in the city. Like, uh, So to, to be able to go through that together was huge for both of us. And then even more so living together. Yeah. Uh, so I think both of that, like that helped both of us a lot. Just talking you know like and we're both young like we're still very like we just do stupid shit right yeah. like, we, <laughs> yeah. you don't know a lot um <laughs> so we just had a lot of fun like i don't think we maybe cooked once <laughs> dude together. my next question yeah. was gonna be were you a full yeah. uber eats household and it oh, sounds like it we would go like either go out to eat or order in i'd say every night like, yeah we never cooked and he's well, actually like a pretty good cook i've found out afterwards yeah. yeah you're like what the Damn fuck Mo? Yeah. <laughs> make me a meal one yeah. time he cooked he cooked a couple times like maybe once or twice um but i never cooked for sure i'm not a great cook but um yeah we would just like practice come home chill on the couch then we'd go out and toss the football around for yeah. like an hour yeah uh, play like mini golf inside the apartment like yeah. townhouse great move dinner watch movie and then just rinse and repeat every day it was awesome what were your go-to spots yeah where are you ordering from uh and going out to eat yeah it was a lot of pasta we found this pasta place where we lived out in birmingham nice uh which was great and uh then the sushi spot that we did go to a lot and then just regular like steaks yeah uh we would like we it was different because like the food like it's either sushi pasta steak like there's not really any other options that you like we never did like thai or yeah, yeah. chinese or anything so we would just like rotates on five spots for the <laughs> that's the best when you find it because that's what you wanted or no yeah. other options because there's no good place there's no good thai places out here no I, that's what we wanted yeah okay so you just I keep think. it in that yeah rotation. yeah 
Uh, but it was cute. Like we were going on dates. I was about to say, just like thinking about you guys getting back from Lighting practice or games, and being like, "All right, let's go to yeah, dinner. yeah." <laughs> it's fucking awesome. I know um, yeah, it was awesome. But uh, the big question, dude, have you replaced his mini football yet? The fuck? No, no, I never did that actually. Dude, the, you have a easy birthday or Christmas gift for him. I know. Like, you I wrap know. that up with a nice bow, and he opens a new mini football. He's gonna be over the moon for a year. I know. Maybe I did. No, I did not. Yeah. <laughs> I did not. But it was like we were, someone stole it, to be honest. I was about to get it. We were tossing it around outside. That is bullshit, dude. No, you no, tossed no, no, no. it on that balcony. A little, <laughs> ki- a little kid stole it. I tossed it on that balcony, and I came out the next day, and it was gone. <laughs> it, could, it couldn't have gone anywhere. So like, so the kid took dude, it. but if the a little kid took it, sees yeah. a mini football on his balcony, he thinks yeah. Santa has made yeah. a weird yeah. mid-season pit stop. So I yeah. don't blame him. No, I never got him one, but. What was it? Was it like a little lion's ball, or no, like what? It was just like. Was breakfast. it like squishy, or was it? No, it was like a, just a actual, like just a mini actual football. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it, was, it was. It was like anything special, like. Um, it, meant, it was special to him. Dude. It, was it was special, special to him. Yeah, yeah. It was special. But what's to him. the deal, dude? Why'd you move out? Um, you guys had a great thing going. <laughs> well, yeah, we did, but it was also like, um, he. It was like he rented the place. Yeah. And then we like came friends and he's like, Hey, let's stay together. And I was like, Yeah, sure. And I was still waiting on my like the housing letter. Oh yeah, yeah. From yeah. Detroit. Yeah. Uh so I was staying at a hotel downtown. So then I was like, Yeah. And then I got the letter. And then I was like, Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then he had his family come in. I had my family come in for Christmas. And then I was like, uh, might be a little too tight mm-hmm. for, for everyone. Uh, so that was kinda it. But like even when I moved out, we still dinner every day. Like, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Hung sick. out, so such an awesome thing to have. Like, oh I mean, God. obviously, the boys get tight real quick. Yeah. But like, if you have something like that in your first year, someone who's going through the same thing, it's just like such a dream. Yeah. Yeah. No, Dude, it was fun. It do was you fun. do you remember? Because I had this revelation a few years ago where you know I don't play sports anymore. I'm trying to stay healthy, yeah. and I was like, dude cereal is awful for you it's yeah. a disaster and so i now i can't have cereal anymore and now i find out that moe's got this delicious healthy cereal yeah, i forgot about that what is it i don't know <laughs> i need I've, you to remember I immediately because i it's need some to know german secret shit yeah. dude that we gotta it was, find it's it. crazy he would order these like cereals he's a very healthy guy yeah he's a very healthy guy uh like doesn't drink any soda or anything Fuck. like that so he would order these cereals and i tried them one day and it was like chocolate like chocolate chip cookie and it was like all these it was unbelievable yeah like, it tasted like candy yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and i was like dude like what's happened to you and he's like no they're healthy show me the packet and it's like no sugar like god good for you I, when you get to the rank tomorrow yeah you yeah. gotta ask my gonna text and him right send, after yeah, let us know something. yeah, yeah we gotta <laughs> right? that on order be, dude yeah. i think the thing i miss most in this world is when i could just like bowl anytime cereal. your snack bowl of cereal and yeah. now i do that and i like, can't walk for two weeks it's <laughs> so man. fucking bad for you it's unbelievable. yeah Okay, yeah, we'll get to the bottom. We got to get most we'll healthy get to the bottom of that. That's yeah. like uh, n- no question. Yep. Right. All right, let's talk draft real yeah. quick. Um, well, part of it, the uh, COVID year, right? So you know you're at your you're up at two a.m. or whatever, yeah. waiting, waiting for your day to get called. Most worth most worthwhile stay up late night yeah. ever for a game. Um, but you, I had read that you had said you had a good dialogue with Stevie Y pre-draft so you kind of had a sense that he might take you you know whatever yeah my biggest question is tell me about that dialogue dude we've heard some crazy stories about stuff stevie asks guys and what he's talking about pre-draft so what were those combos like uh honestly it wasn't anything crazy like i uh i also heard a lot of crazy yeah. stories coming into it uh i think that's what we're starting to learn dude it's all just rumors smoking you you on smoke no I, I know like <laughs> i have some close friends who's had some crazy stories so like i know it happens but Coming into that, it was also like I did everything over Zoom. Sure, yeah. So I wasn't like right. in person with them. Uh, but like just talking to Detroit, I just had a good talk. Like Steve, um, we I, I wouldn't say we talked a lot. Like he was obviously on the meetings and asking some stuff. Yeah. And obviously uh, all the other guys on there as well. But um, coming into it, I was like talking with my agent and – I was like, do you guys know anything? And they were like, we have no idea. And then I got a couple of hints. Uh, so coming into it, I was like, I had like maybe a couple of teams yep. that I knew. Uh, and then I was obviously hoping for Detroit and then that ended up happening. You're like, dude, I got to be in bed by two. Top five or bust. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But, yeah. and then what about, what about now? Like how much do you interact with Steve now? Like, is, is he in the room talking to you guys a lot? Or you never see him or how does that work? Uh, no, like he, he's down there and we obviously talk to him and he's, 
he's good in that way. He isn't like in the locker room, like yeah. stuff like that. He's just like around and, and you know, if, if he wants to talk to you about something, you know, you'll talk and then obviously if you, you can bring it up to him too. But yeah, um, if he wants to talk to you, is that usually bad news? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Both yes and no yeah. probably, but he's, he's really good that way. Like yeah. with the dialogue and even when I came in, he was really good. Just, you know, letting me know that if I needed any help or anything like that, that he, he would be happily helping out. So. Yeah. Uh, he's been good to me. That's great. Is it? Yeah. Is it? You kind of mentioned this before, but is it extra motivating with guys like that and Zetterberg and everybody just kind of like walking around the organization? Yeah. You're like, Jesus Christ, I got a standard to uphold here. Yeah, no, for sure. And uh, like, it's it's crazy. Like you, you, I want to say you get used to it, but like, yeah, no, I know what you mean. <laughs> if you like see those guys around, like you're freaking out usually, and then they're you know just chilling, walking yeah, just around. Stevie. Yeah, yeah. Up, Stevie. Yeah. <laughs> what do you call him? Steve. Steve. Yeah. Steve. Steve. You don't call him Steve. Stevie Y? <laughs> no. Steve. Man, I, I'm, I've always really thought, I mean, we grew up Bruins fans, but Lidstrom was my favorite player growing up. And yeah. I always kind of had a kinship for the Wings and then fell in love with Datsuk. So I was like, this is my second team. I fucking love the Wings. Yeah. I feel like maybe more than any other team, and, and that's ridiculous to say when you think about teams like the Canadiens and even the Leafs, but... There feels like there's such a aura of the Red Wings with just the city and your team. When you talk about guys like Steve being in charge, who is a legend for the team, you guys, you got guys like Cronwall who are reaching out to young new players, and I think it even goes as far as like Larks being the captain, who's you know from this area, went to Michigan, is like a, just a lifelong Wings guy. Yeah. Do you feel like that's something that you guys feel in the locker room and around the training facilities? That's like it does really mean something to be a Red Wing and part of this organization. A hundred percent, a hundred percent, and just like you walk around the locker room, you see all the, you know, all the plaques and all the records that have been broken. You know, the Stanley Cup banners. Like you see all the individual trophies that people have yeah. won uh it's inspiring and then just the city of detroit like during my three years here the i can't remember one night that a crowd haven't been good That's you know awesome. and we've had some awesome. tough times like yeah uh so this year you know i think we've been playing really good so it's been it's been really fun so far to to be able to give that back to them and um it's it's a lot of pride in in wearing the red wings logo and um I think everyone feels it and everyone everyone definitely knows it in Absolutely. the team and around the team. Absolutely. You talk about year three and we've we've touched on you had this unbelievable rookie year, got fucking jobbed in the Calder for yeah, Mo, goes, fuck you, Mo. No, fuck you <laughs> not Mo, fuck you bunting. <laughs> fucking thirty year old rookie. Um, but then, you know, you guys still rebuilding last year you have like a dip, I guess you could call it, but you're still buzzing out there, absolutely. And then you come in this year and you're on fire and you're on pace to, you know, shatter all, all of your points that you've set from rookie year. What do you think it is about this team, your mentality, where you at physically, mentally, emotionally, that's made you take this jump and has you guys feeling so good right now? Um, I think a lot of different factors, you know, obviously I think, uh, the way our team is built this year, I think that's, uh, I think it's working really good just with all the different parts we have. Uh, and also, like, I feel like every year, like, I was talking to Mo about this the other day. Like, if you look at my, our first year, how many guys are still on the team compared to this year? Dude. I think it's four guys excluding me and Mo. Yeah. Um, so it's it's changed a lot, but it's gone at a good pace. Like, yeah. it, it wasn't like we felt like, oh, my God, this is such a big difference. Like, it's just, like, progressively – uh got into a good direction uh and you know for myself i uh feel like you know i come in i'm 19 and everything's brand new you're you know just playing off uh, adrenaline and everything's yeah. so exciting and then you know next year it's everything's different uh so i think i'm just settling in and uh, just trying to trying to play my game i guess absolutely how how real do you think chemistry is like you're playing with some of these guys now you know larks now you've got three years with them do you think that that is something that's really noticeable for you and, and the other guys you're playing with? Uh, I think so, for sure. I mean, obviously, it's easier when you do something with someone for a longer period of time. Like, you just notice this patterns, like, where people like to be on the ice. Yeah, and yeah. The way they skate, move, I think it's um, it's easy to, to adjust to. And, obviously, I've played a lot with Dylan, so it's, you know, it's just 
Maybe he takes off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to find him. Yeah. Trying to find him in speed. Uh, but I feel like that's a big thing with our team this year too. Like we can mix with the lines so much and still everyone feels comfortable playing with, with everyone. Just the depth with, we have in our lineup. And, um, you know, then obviously adding adding Kaner to, to it helps a lot. So um, I just like the way our team is, is playing and uh, functioning right now, I guess. Hell yeah. Speaking of that depth, I had read a quote you had where when, I think maybe it was the off season when you were bringing in all these bodies and it's like, I, someone had asked you, what do you think about that? And you're like, well, it's good. It's competition. You know, yeah. everyone raise your game up. So talk a little bit about what, that adds and also kind of just the belief it, that you're getting from management right like hey we're, we're going for it here dude this this squad's great so yeah. we were talking about before but hit us about that and like guys like Kane are being there too yeah uh yeah like you said like when you have that many good players like obviously everyone wants to play and everyone wants to play in good situations uh and you know i think it ups ups compete and everything and that's healthy com competition yeah, yeah. you know it's not like you want anyone to do bad you just want to get better yourself uh and uh, I think that's the thing about our team, too. We have so many competitive guys, and uh, you can see it in games. Like, we were talking earlier about the Ottawa game where we're down, and just the way we were able to come back in those games, I think that says a lot about our team. Uh, so I think that's a huge part of it. And then, obviously, you know, Kaner coming in, it's one of the, <laughs> the best players <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to play this game. So uh, obviously, you know, means a lot for us, and he's been – He's been great on and off the ice, so uh, it's been fun. And you were saying seeing him 30 minutes before <laughs> practice, 30 minutes after practice, right? It's like if he's doing that, everyone's got to commit, right? Yeah, for sure. And I, it just builds a cult culture, I feel like. Yeah. And guys like that, you know, you guys look at and you, you kind of follow. And if if you see him doing that, like, there's no reason why you shouldn't. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, so real, dude. So real. It's so real. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Well, you guys are right in the playoff mixer here. Talk to us a little bit about, and I know you were talking about the barns always packing everything, but just what it would mean to you guys in the locker room, but just the fans, the city, and everything to, to keep this thing pumping in the right direction, get in the playoffs, and start making some runs. Uh, it would mean a lot for a lot of people. Uh, I mean, you just saw the Lions when yeah, they, great when point, they made this yep. push. Uh, just how the city is just you know, rallying around you. and uh, That's got to be motivating, right? For sure. Like, yeah. we were playing, they were chanting Jared Goff yeah. all game. <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah. Uh, <laughs> which is kind of sick. Uh, so yeah, you just see the city come alive, and uh, the city has had so much success, like, if we're talking about the Red Wings. and Totally. Um, you know, it's been it's been some time, and I think everyone's eager to, to get back there. And, um, you know, we have some players on our team, too, who's been here for a very long time, who's been through all of it, so... Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I think everyone's eager to get back there, and obviously the the playoff would be would be great. Do you got how much you guys talk about that? Is it not at all? It's just next game, next game, or are you guys like watching the standings? Like, come on, boys, we're so close. Uh, no, I wouldn't say we talk about it a lot. It's more like obviously everyone has it in the back of their mind. Yeah. Like that's where we're what we're playing for. But I think to be able to get there, you have to take it. You know, just short steps. You know, just game by game, week by week. Yep. Like otherwise, you just get go crazy i feel like yeah true uh, <laughs> but sure. obviously it's in the back of our minds yep amazing um before we play a little pass shoot score i want to ask one question is the white or the red jersey cooler <sighs> that's a tough one i know it's the hardest I'm question i've ever asked anybody time. like <laughs> in one month i loved it i i like both um uh, i'd probably say the the red one is more like powerful like it's yeah it's, good word it's, for it's it sick, yeah it's a sick jersey dude i feel the, like when you're at lca and the the fan the the stands are blood oh, red dude. too yeah. like that's fucking sick, sick. It is sick. <laughs> but the white one's just clean too like oh my god it's nice yeah. probably plausibly the best that's jersey gas. in sports yeah, yeah. yeah. my favorite okay so we close out with close out everybody with this game it's called pass shoot score yeah so we get we pick categories of things we think you like we list three options, okay. and you have to rank them pass, shoot, score. Okay. Pass is your least favorite because it's, you know, passing the puck's cool, but we're yeah. trying to score. <laughs> shoot is your second favorite because we're going to get pucks on net. Yeah. Score is your favorite. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Here is your first one. Pass, shoot, score. The category is music. Okay. Matthew Wilder, Break My Stride. Florida Georgia Line, Meant to Be. Or The Killers, Mr. Brightside. So... <laughs> 
bright side is for sure score. For wow. sure score. Dude, yeah. that song came into your life and yeah. you fucking loved it ever since, eh? Yeah. Well, that was my Tell the story of you just hearing it at the rink. That killed me. Oh, I love I love when I hear it at the <laughs> rink for sure. And it was also me and Mo sang it together at rookie party, so that's why it's very dear to my heart. Yep. Uh, and then what was the other one? Florida. Florida Georgia Line. Yeah. Meant to be. Okay. Or you can pick if whatever Florida Georgia Line song that no, you like. No, no, okay, that meant one to I... be and break my stride. Uh so break my stride is uh shoot because when me and mo were living together every time we'd drive into the arena we'd listen to that song every game <laughs> before every game every game <laughs> we'd turn that on <laughs> so that's number two okay. and then uh oh the, did you do it at a specific moment every yeah, day like would yeah. you hit a part on the drive that you're like okay time yeah, to play it turning off the highway and then it's like a minute and a half left yeah perfect timing that's fantastic yeah and then Florida Georgia Line pass. Yeah, well, it's a good song. I like that song. Yep. Actually, what's what kind of country are you listening to? I know you're a bit of a country guy. Yeah, I like country. I like um, I like Morgan Wallen a lot. Oh yeah, Zach Bryan I like a lot. Uh, and then just random different country songs. I feel like yeah. just country playlist. Are yep. you listening to Swedish rap more than American rap, or has American rap taken over? Uh, I don't listen to a lot of rap. May, yeah, I do listen to some American rap. Okay. A lot on the pregame playlist is a lot of yeah, American yeah. rap. Can't avoid it. No. Yeah. So not a lot of Swedish rap, actually. Okay. Your next pass shoot score is going to be the GOAT category. Yeah. Yes. So number one, Michael Jordan. Yeah. I know you love The Last Dance. Yeah. Number two, we're in Detroit, Pavel Datsuk. I wore yeah. my short for you, dude. It's your guy. That is a yeah. short. <laughs> and number three... Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Oh, uh, wow, that's a tough one. Yep. That is a very tough one. I'd say <clears throat> Jordan is probably number one. He's he scored. He's just the greatest athlete yeah. of all time. Yep. Unbelievable. Uh, well, other than Tom Brady. Yeah, other than yes. Brady. Other than Maybe Brady. yeah. <laughs> Not a big football fan. Uh, and then I'll have to go with Datsuk at at shoot just because I watched him so much growing yeah, up. Yeah, dude, he's fucking. It was like the magic man. Yeah, I watched. I almost know all these highlights, and then Slatan, I have to take a pass, even though I love him too. Yeah, yeah. he's a. Are, now, are you a big fo- soccer football yeah. fan? Yeah. Because I know you got you went to the FA Cup Manchester yeah. Derby, dude. Yeah. Um, do you have a team? I do Manchester United, unfortunately, right now. Yeah. They're well, hey, well, we're Chelsea fans. Yeah, I was so I say feel we're feeling it. Yeah, I feel you worse. big time. It's tough times. <sighs> Very tough times. Yeah. It's. Do you want crazy. to keep Ten Hag or no? I don't know to be honest. Like, I don't think so anymore. I did before. Yeah. Now I just feel like he's gotten so much time. Dude, like, nothing's getting better. No. Like that's it's the getting problem. Getting worse, to be honest. Yeah. Like last year was not bad. We finished. What fourth? Yeah, yeah, out of nowhere. By yeah. the way, like yeah. half of the season, I was like, "Man, he's gonna get relegated." Yeah. Yeah. and then and now, like, like Rashford the just like doesn't play. Yep. No. Holland hasn't scored. No. Like, he has like one goal. Sancho's leaving. Like, yeah, it's tough. We have a lot of guys injured. We have a lot of guys. Yeah, injured. yeah. No, you, you do. Yes, <laughs> they have a lot of guys injured though. But yeah. uh, no, I'll probably go watch them this summer too. Yeah, dude. Well, I was gonna say you're lucky on the East Coast. On the yeah. West Coast, the Prem games are a nightmare. Are you guys oh, soccer fans? Oh yeah, huge, huge, really? seriously, yeah. like yeah. huge yeah. Chelsea fans. That's like sick. it's. Yeah. I, That's I have a Chelsea shirt on under this. You do? Yeah. yeah. I yeah. literally just wore I wore mine on the plane just change out. Yeah, yeah, my right. dad's shirt on for you. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, that's great. But I was also dying here, and you because because similar talking time zones, you were like it's hard to watch it yeah. stuff in Sweden. But you were like all I could find was all the Datsu highlights. So I, I know like, that pumps me up big yeah. time. Yeah, <laughs> amazing. Okay, here's your next one. Yep. This category is movies. Pass shoot score, Scarface, the entire Harry Potter franchise, mm. or. A romantic comedy with a happy ending. <laughs> <laughs> well, a romantic comedy with a happy ending. It's probably it's probably a goal. Yeah, yeah. It's a easy score. It's easy score. Yeah. Um, dude, we have to talk about that quickly. Yeah. Completely agree. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. Dude, we got back from. So underrated. We got back from Toronto for All Star. Yeah. Absolutely crippled. Yeah. And it's pouring rain in LA. Oh yeah. LA. yeah. It's never raining. Which We're doesn't hungover. happen. It's raining. Yeah. yeah. Laid down on the couch. No joke. Watched three rom coms back to back to back. Oh, best day of my life. You it's getting in a good mood. Yeah. It's we the watched best. Uh, the new one. What is that one called? The um, How new? It's the it's, Sydney Sweeney one. Yeah. No hard fe- or no, no not no, no hard um, feelings. It's, it's, um, it's, anyone but anyone you. But you. Yeah. yeah. Watched that twice <laughs> on cinema. In theaters both times. Oh yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. Twice on the road. With yeah. The guys. That's amazing. Different yeah. group or the same group went both times. 
Like, did you see it twice with two different groups? Or three of us were the same person, <laughs> and then one guy. There was one guy first time, and then another one. Who were the three? Fantastic. It was Kaner, me, and Cat. Kaner, yeah. I. That's surprising me to too. me. That's, that's surprising. surprising to me. Well, it was like we were, we we're gonna watch a, uh, a movie. We wanted to go to a movie. Yeah. First time, and then it was new. Everyone's talking about yeah, it. Yeah. It's like, okay, let's see it. And the second time, we were about to watch another movie. And then we show up, and we had the wrong time. Oh, no. So then that was the only movie that yeah, was there. So just we were there. It, run so it back, like, dude. Oh, well. <laughs> I have to watch it again. Sometimes the second watch is better, dude. Yeah. Yeah. You're ready for the jokes. It's yeah. amazing. I actually liked it the second one time more. Yeah. There we go. Did. And then yeah, I mean, Mo, dude, sometimes you're laughing too hard. You miss jokes. Yeah. Great. Mo went first time. He was out the second one. And then Larks watched it with us the, the second time. That's amazing. beautiful. It was great. It was yeah. great. What, amazing stuff. what are some of your favorite romantic yeah, comedies sure. with happy endings? That's a very, very tough question. I like... Uh, that one might be one of the top of the list. Okay. Just that might be some recency bias, to be honest with you. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then I like the one with uh, Ashton. No. Yeah. Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis. Yes. That's one. Dude. No, I no, no. no. Wait. No, no, that's right. That's the new one. You're right. You're right. You're yeah. right. The new Netflix one. Oh. No, I'm thinking about no, the, you mean older the older one. one. The No, no Strings no Attached? Strings attached. Yeah. Okay, so that's Natalie Portman. Natalie Portman. Oh, Mila exactly. Kunis is in the other with, uh, loosely uh, guidelines on relationships with Justin Timberlake yes. called Friends with Benefits. Time. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I like both of those. I like both of those. Then also Adam Sandler has one, which I think is hilarious. Um, it's like, dude, he's got Just Go With It. He's got 50 First Dates. Yeah. yeah. yeah he's got some bangers. I like those a lot. Yeah. yeah. Those are good ones. Yeah. Okay, but you got to finish um, oh, Scarface and Harry Potter. Then I'll go Harry Potter as uh, shoot. Oh, nice. And uh, Scarface yeah. had passed because I haven't watched Scarface, to be honest with you. Yeah. Oh, okay. You got into Potter recently, though. Yeah. yeah well, no, got... I watched it. It was a while ago now, but I watched all of them. Has Mo seen him yet? Yeah, Mo. No. <laughs> yeah. What, is, what a clown, okay, so. dude. No. I'm going to send him a We're going to get him a football and, box yeah. and we're going to get him yeah. a box set. Yeah. 100%. He's a happy guy. 100%. Yeah. Um, all right, dude. All right, here's the big My one. last one for you yeah. is Midsommar related. Now, I've got to ask, what, in your opinion, like where's the best place for Midsommar at home? Uh, so I would say there's a place, Lexand. Have you ever heard of Lexand? I have, yeah. Yeah. I've never been, but I've heard it's Midsummer there is unbelievable. Okay. It's unbelievable. And what's up with the archipelago? Like, is that... What? It's, it's, was it called in Gothenburg, the Archipelago or whatever? It's like those little islands around the city. I'm probably saying it's so... Oh, well. around Gothenburg? Yeah yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that spot like money to do Midsommar at? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That okay. is dynamite. Yeah, okay. there we go. There so go. Gothenburg's number two. Okay. And then I'd probably say like... Uh, well, no, no, no. So here's here's your pass sheet score. Yeah. We're doing oh. Midsommar Foods. Oh. Okay. Sill? Mm. I'm gonna try to get the pronunciation for you on all this. Yeah. But you gotta say what it is for the listeners. Okay. Everyone else doesn't know. Pickled so. herring is yep. still. Yep. Yeah. Gotta go mustard too for me. Yeah. Kanuka brood. Yeah. And then this is my favorite word ever. Jorgup storta. <laughs> Not the bad. last one was really good, actually. Yeah. yeah. There you <laughs> go. It was really good. Shout out. So my girlfriend is Swedish. Oh, really? And she helped me a ton with these. So yeah. shouting her out big time. Yeah. Yeah. That was actually really good. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm working on that. Oh, yeah, he, he really day, was the whole baby. flight. Yeah. That is, I I have yet to actually have. So that last one is strawberry cake, by the way. Yeah. yeah. I have yet to have that, and I need oh, to make it yeah. immediately. That is for sure score. Yeah. Oh, the strawberry okay. cake. Yeah. Wow. And then uh, the second one you said is like the crunchy bread. Yep. Right? Yep. Knacky bread. Yep. Uh, I'd say that as a, a shoot. Yeah. And then sell the fish thing as a pass because I, I don't. Not into it? No, I'm not into it. It's a pretty gnarly. It was gnarly, dude. I, we yeah. did, he, because um, Alice came yeah. and we did a Midsommar at yeah. the house and we, that was there, right? We had a few. Oh, yeah. Things. We had Is that. that one? Yeah, it was oh, sick. Yeah. We did a, we had Aquavit. We were doing the song. Oh, it was yeah. fucking yeah, awesome. Yeah, we did the song. That was, that was, was it like, hey, Lon, go. Yeah. So something yeah, yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's but fucking the, awesome, the, the seal was a little intense. Yeah, I thought I was going to like it and I was like, whoa. In the mustard sauce, I like it. I like it. It's like, Either you love it or you like don't like it at all. Yeah, yeah. I feel like there's no between. But uh, Toskagen is that shit is fucking yeah. gas. So I that, mean, that's why you have it because your girlfriend's Swedish. Yeah. Right? yeah, yes, and it's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's like so. Stuff, right? We yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. bomb. Yeah, that I like shit that is lot. so fucking. Good. They usually have it on like the golf course in Sweden, like halfway house. The oh yeah, that's oh. nice. 
That's wow, real nice. Dude. Yeah. We got to yeah. start doing that. That's insane. Yeah. What a good snack. Um, and then, okay, so that's a, I feel like I would be the same. same that right. would be my same. Yeah. Yeah. I got to try the strawberry cake. That's awesome. Um, and are you an Aquavit fan? I fucking love Aquavit. I mean, I'm not a fan, but <laughs> but you'll do it. <laughs> I'll do it for yeah, sure. Yeah, you got it. Do you, you guys do in. big Midsommars or are you like kind of, yeah. yeah? No, big. We usually do like... Big family uh, thing or do you do it with a friend? Do you do it with everybody? What's the no, deal? No, like when I was younger, it was a family thing. Yeah, like yeah. We do a little, a little bit more calm. But now, like when I got an older, it's usually like a bunch of friends. Yeah. We'll do like, uh, we'll go golfing in the morning. Sick. And then we'll go out to a friend who, who has a house like on the water. So we'll do like water, like uh, have like the big thing that you dress up, you dance around. Oh, sick. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, uh, have you guys seen those? The maypole? Yeah. What is it called? A maypole, right? But I don't, I don't know what it's called for Midsommar, but yeah, that's what it looks like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's like in that area, it's like one of those huge ones. And then everyone who lives in that area comes to that place. Yeah. You just dance around it, Fucking I guess. Sick. Just... <laughs> A little then you de- de- decapitate somebody and the, yeah. the human sacrifice yeah, yeah. starts. Have you seen <laughs> that movie? <laughs> Which one? The mid- Midsommar? No, I haven't. Don't. Don't watch Don't it, dude. It's if crazy. you like rom-coms with a happy ending, <laughs> yeah, dude, no. it's a horror movie that came out a couple of years ago. Yeah. And it's about like a group of friends that goes to Sweden uh, for Midsommar. And it's, dude, it's one of the most unsettling yeah. movies I've ever watched in my life. Oh, it's but fucking horrifying. It's I'll do fun. Yeah, yours sounds like, more fun. I'll do yours. Such yeah. Bullshit. Yeah. Like so many Americans are now like, what the fuck goes on at midsummer? This no, is insane. It's awesome. It's yeah. awesome. It's so much fun. It's like an all day thing and then you have lunch, dinner, and then Yeah. It's the best. And yeah. then strawberry cake. Strawberry cake. Boom. Fuck yeah, dude. We Amazing. gotta make some of that. Yeah. Um, all right, Lucas, this has been a fucking blast. Uh can't thank you enough. Before we let you go, is there anything you wanna shout out? Anyone anything you wanna plug? Anyone you say want to say hello to, yeah. to? No, I think so, to be honest. Just thank you, boys. That was great. Oh, my God. Yeah. Absolute blast. Um, can't wait to have you on again. And then yeah. we'll also fucking see you rip it up on Saturday. Yeah. Perfect. Beautiful stuff, dude. Boom. Thanks so much. Thank you, guys. All right, squad. We got to take a quick break so I can talk to you about Southern Comfort. No matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, Southern Comfort is the best spirit in the game to keep the party going because it is made with the greatest ever blend of fruits and spices with a dash of whiskey flavor. Whether you're in a cold city area or a warm city area, I was kind of going to say it's getting colder. It's the winter right now. Soko gives you that nice warm feeling. But if you're in a sunny spot too, it is the best spirit to make a cocktail with. Me, myself, I'm a big Soko Diet Dr. Pepper guy. Might sound crazy to you, but give it a shot. I guarantee you'll love it. And if you really want to keep the party going, whether you're with a big group of friends, bachelor party, bachelorette party, something like that, get to the bar and order some SoCo Sour Shots. One part SoCo, two parts sour mix. They are the perfect recipe to keep everybody buzzing. Southern Comfort is that phenomenal blend, that phenomenal flavor with that classic whiskey touch that you love that's going to keep everyone in the crew happy. Southern Comfort is the way to go every time. Huge thanks to John Scott and Lucas Raymond. Also want to give a huge shout out to Detroit, dude. Yeah, dude, what a time. We had we had such a good time. We were joking. I felt like sometimes if you, if you go to a city like Philly and you're giving the city shit, Philly people are like, fuck you. Yeah. You're like, go Philly. Jersey dude, you go too. To Detro- yeah, yeah, you go to Detroit. And everybody was like, ah, what do you guys think? And we're like, we're having a great time. And they're like, oh, man, thanks so much. We're okay, right? We're not too bad. Like, everyone there is just so it's self-conscious about Detroit. But I was like, hey, keep that head up, baby. This place is awesome. Uh, I, you know, I know that we're really positive guys and we'll, we'll tire pump a lot. But I genuinely mean it when I say I had such a phenomenal time. I think that downtown Detroit area is beautiful. I, I mean that. It's such – there's sick architecture. There's amazing food. And the people are just so nice. They just love Detroit and want other people to give Detroit a chance. And I couldn't have had a better time. Um, shout out the David Whitney building. Yeah, Unreal dude. stay. Wow. Shout out the Detroit Red Wings. Their team was so incredibly nice. Brought us in. Showed us a great time. And we just had a blast with with Lucas and uh, the other interview that you'll see. I'm not going to. Yep. We've got to keep it under wraps. A little tease action. But um, truly had the best time. Uh, let's pop it into some armchair GM. We've had a little bit of an all-star break. So Blake, give us a rundown on where we stand. Yep. So just to update the standings. Uh, so Dan has 95 points and Chris is 99. 
Uh, so, nice. How the fuck is this nice. kitty? It's still above. So well, we didn't. So we didn't. We didn't draft any genius. teams uh, over the All Star break, <laughs> and we left everything as is. So yes. this okay. week we are introducing our first team. Oh. It's the first team. Every player that you select must be over the age of thirty three. So 33 years or older. Very cool. Um, so just to kind of mix things up and, and put a little flair on it. And everyone's available, right? Because we... Everyone's available. It's been too long. To be, just need yep. to be uh, 33 and older. Okay. I got first pick. Is it just a guy I want to take? <laughs> and I just would feel stupid to not take him, I think. Um, so I'm going to do it. I should have checked the games. Fuck, I'm behind the eight ball, Blakey. All right, give me Crosby. It was my first pick. Just like let someone else have him one time. No, <laughs> he's my such he's a my golden boy, bitch. Um, I'm gonna go Victor Hedman. I'm starting with defense. That's my guy. I love Vic. Um, That's good. Rocked his number at All Star Weekend. So give me. All right, I'm gonna go D two. Give me Brent Burns. That's a good pick. Big point guy. Thank you, Blake. Hedman has more points than him. This but season. that's do but I like, like what the like, fuck, dude? I, I like thought of like everyone's gonna think. Of Who would have thought of Brent Burns? He had like seventy five points last year. Give me a break, dude. Hey, um, I'm gonna go Brad Marchand having an unbelievable oh, season. Good one, First season without Bergeron. <laughs> fuck you, Blake. Uh, I love Brad. That's my guy. Yeah. When's the last time this happened? All star, all stars a few years ago. Ride the hot hand. Give me Alex Ovechkin. Oh. How about that line? Oh, man. I wanted to take this. This isn't who I was about to talk about. I just wanted to take Stoner, but he's not quite 33. Um, I'm going to go friend of the pod and go Matt Duchesne. That's another good pick. He's on a tear. Yeah. He's on a tear Damn, right how now. How old is Dutchie? Dutchie, I think, is he's either 34 or is about to turn 34. No, I think he's turned 30. No, no, he just turned 33 in January. Uh, dude, there's a goalie I want. There's a goalie I want so bad, but I just don't know how many starts he's going to get. <laughs> um, I'm going to bank on him getting one start and the shutout and the win. Give me Johnny Quick. Oh, that is a gamble. Um, okay. I'm going to go, I need to go to the tape here and, uh, not on age on position. Mm. Daily face off daily face off. Which team go to the, uh, I, I can't wait to see Chris's facial expression. Go to the Dallas stars. For this is what I said. I couldn't believe you didn't take him right away. Who, who is it? Joey tip drill Pavelski. Is he a right wing or is he playing? He is a right winger. Would you look at that? My next pick will be Joe Pavelski of the that's, Dallas Stars. That's very bad for me. I got two sure. stars though, so I'm I'm riding high on Dallas. Okay, right wing. Give me Claude Giroux. Damn, I like it. I like it. <laughs> um, I'm surprised that this uh, fell to my lap, but Eric Carlson on defense. Uh... Yeah, okay. Okay, with my last one, right? My last pick? Yep. Give me uh I'll go I'll double up on Penguin today and give me Chris Letang. Okay. And um I just can't believe this. You know, the starts thing is is a question, but I I just feel like this was obvious and when you went goalie first and you didn't take it, I was pretty shocked. I'm obviously going to take Ser Sergei Bobrovsky. Very good goalie. Very yeah. good goalie in the league. Like, <laughs> what the fuck are we doing here? <laughs> hey, Johnny Quick's having a year, dude. Markstrom was also available. I, I Marsh Talbot. Markstrom and Bob were both uh, players of the week this week, so I felt like those would have been the obvious too. Um, okay, that's our armchair GM. We'll see how we stand after the week. Now we got to get into saucy predictions. I don't even want to talk about what they were. We both picked the couple of games leading into All-Star Weekend. We both were so Got wrong. them all wrong. Yeah, so wrong. So we're both eating hot sauce. Let's get ready for our picks this week. Do you have yours prepared? Yeah. So do I. Let me sauce up here. So 
I'm going to get uh, I'm going to get one of these weeks, guys. Dan's in office. I don't know if this is getting recorded, but Dan's in office. Yeah, it is. He's eaten the 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 last dab. I had to go buy some a salad that had chicken on it, peeled the chicken off, bought the hottest hot sauce they have, which is habanero and it says genuinely hot on the label can, we, can you see the label yeah, yeah what pisses me off is we have no way to verify if this is actually hot for chris oh shit i just got some my nose i'm about to die fuck <laughs> this is all bullshit dude it's either gonna be yeah just a little part a part of this block or we're gonna need to all some right. trader joe's let's get this going cheers ready okay oh we're just going right now yeah yeah right. we're going hold on here we go. Yep. I forgot water again. <laughs> Do you want this? No. I've got to learn to deal with it. Oh. Fuck. Some of the SoCo right there. <laughs> I hate this segment. Mine might be worse, dude. It's such bullshit. Okay. I swear to God, I have another piece. <clears throat> I'm going to start. The Los Angeles Kings' first game with Jim Hiller behind the bench was an emphatic win over their rival Edmonton Oilers. I feel a hiccup coming. They have four games from now until next Monday. The Buffalo Sabres, the New Jersey Devils, the Boston Bruins, and the Pittsburgh Penguins. I want to say the LA Kings will be 2-2 two and two in that stretch, but I feel like you guys might tell me that that's not hot enough or saucy enough. Yeah, not Any more than that. So I'm... <laughs> I'm <laughs> I just inhaled it. <coughs> I'm going to say they'll be 3-1. and one. So Kings go 3-1 and one over the next four. What's brutal is... We're going to know if I'm fucked by Thursday. And I'll be at that game. I fucked up. <clears throat> this is hotter than the one we have at the office. Oh, fuck, dude. <clears throat> this is a fucking disaster. All right, the Avs uh, <clears throat> lost four straight. Holy shit, dude. They got... <clears throat> Capitals on the road, Lightning on the road, uh, Yotes at home before next step. <clears throat> they scored six goals in their last four games, all losses. They're going to get hot. They're going to turn it around. They're pissed right now. Very winnable games coming up. Uh, not talking about record, but in the next three games, the Avs are going to score 13 goals. In the next four? Three. <laughs> Jesus. Five, five, four, four. Actually, probably four, four, five in that order. But so thirteen goals in their next four games. Yeah, yeah, next three. But <clears throat> wow. Okay. All right. Those uh, are our saucy predictions. We'll go, see dude. how we're doing, guys. We've got another big week of travel coming up. Headed to Stadium Series. We're going to be in New Jersey at MetLife for the Devils, Flyers, Rangers, Islanders, Tilts, outdoors. If you're in the area. Follow us on the IG. Meet up with us. Say what's up. Can't wait for all this coming up. Hope you enjoyed this amazing episode with those great interviews with John Scott and Lucas Raymond. We will see you guys in New Jersey, and then we'll see you next week on the pod. And until then, skate hard. Skate hard.